Okay, welcome everyone. I'm here with Rock Eastwood Outdoors. Rock Eastwood. So, uh, thank you for coming on the show. Um, Thanks for inviting me. Yeah, yeah. Glad to have you on. Finally, I've been uh, I've been okay. following you for a while, and uh, I, I I like your videos. Uh, go ahead and uh, introduce yourself for the audience. Right. I'm. Well, thank you so much for that uh, kind words. My name is Rocky. I run a runner i'm on youtube as rocky stood outdoors on instagram stuff like that so i'm just an outdoorsman a guy who loves, enjoys outdoors and that's what i do in japan is uh try to go outdoors and try to get other people to go outdoors too which is um not easy to do to talk people into going outdoors and try to explain to them the healing powers of nature and stuff like that so not to be like a hippie <laughs> kind of dude but that's like <laughs> right. kind of thing that i like to do is get people outdoors and they understand well this is what we should be doing because we need to be close to nature in my view in my opinion, everyone needs to get closer to nature. Right, right. Yeah. No, man, uh, I, I've kind of learned that um, myself here, I, actually since moving to Japan, you know, like, sure. um, well, you know, it, anyone who's familiar with uh, with me, you know, knows I, I, I grew up in a really small town in Texas, you know, the countryside. So uh, right um, growing up there, I that's the last place I wanted to be. So I wanted to just get the hell out, you know, so. I I've, lived, yeah. I've lived in big cities. I've lived in rural areas. I've lived in medium-sized cities. And I, um, I, I like, I, I, for me personally, I, I like the outdoors a lot now, you know, like the, absolutely. Yeah. I, I, especially I find, in today's, yeah. I'm sorry, especially in today's climate, like, you know, we don't want them around, be around people. Not, I'm like, not only because of the this COVID thing, but the, oh, yeah. mm. it's, you know, they're talking about the three C's, you know, get away from people and all that. And, um, I, I, I want to live in the countryside. Hokkaido is my favorite place on earth. So I love oh, it there man. so much. So yeah, yeah. So hopefully you got to go there before. I think you said in another video you didn't, which I hope you can someday. Uh, no, yeah, I haven't, so. I haven't been up to Hokkaido yet. Uh, I'd like to though. Oh, it's uh, that, it's great. From, it's just wonderful. from pictures I've seen, it's, um, it's, it's amazing. Yeah, uh, it uh, is. It's really amazing. Yeah. No, I mean, I mean, I'm sure you can attest to this, but you know, I, I've been, you know, you know, uh, Texas has a lot of nice countryside, uh, the American West, you know, Colorado, like I, I've been all throughout, you know, the, the West, I'd still many places I'd like to go, but Japan to me seems to have, and I'm sure you can understand this, seems to have a sort of um, magic to it, you know, and, and it's, it's not something just because I love living here, but something about the nature here just seems very, it, it's, it's, there's something about it that's that's different you know what i mean that's that's absolutely 100 percent, and that's something mm. i try to explore and it, it's hard like first i want to tell you that i i can't read in japanese okay. so it's really hard to do this research but something i'm trying to pull together is to find out how exactly shinto works so we know shinto yeah. has gods in nature and tori and all that so that i want to find more information on that that's the stuff i'm really interested in about japan right. and also when i came to japan um they talked about let's go see the first sunrise of new year's like in the states i was like what we not <laughs> we don't give a dang or we we didn't people i knew and I, i'm from san francisco the bay area yeah. so yeah. um you know this big city right in yeah. oakland california but anyway we didn't care about stuff like that but japanese mm. were really into it like let's go down the beach and watch the first sunrise you know this is i've been in japan a long time now so uh those are kind of, kind of things that i saw that they see from their view I want to get into and that they actually drew me in because with that kind of thing yeah 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 that's interesting um you say that like um uh you know i've i've been in japan quite a quite a while but i had my first um new year's sunrise uh last year 2020 was my first right one on, right and on. Uh, i went to good feeling right <laughs> yeah yeah especially okay. like I, I felt like 2020 was kind of i don't know you know we we put special meaning in numbers but uh sure it, it was kind of like a, it felt like something drastic was was going to change that year I, little did i know what was really right. in store for us last year <laughs> right, but right. um i had a positive feeling about it to be honest sure. with you. but uh i guess i was absolutely a bit... like you said magical there is something magical yeah. about it the sun bursts and you're like whoa it's a new year and i'm still here you know i'm yeah. moving, got all this ahead of me in this new year coming up and yeah it didn't work yeah. out the way we thought but you know yeah, so now, like, I mean, I did, I didn't do it this year because, um, as you know, I, I told sure. you, I was, I was a bit sick uh, over the right, over right, the, right, not non right. non COVID related sickness, but yeah, I was a bit <laughs> sick, yeah. Um, right. But uh, no, I, I, I guess for my next first hike, I haven't been hiking yet this year, um, unfortunately. But uh, I guess for my first one, I'll, uh, I'll try and see if I can do it, do an early morning uh, yeah, one just, just to get that first one in. You know what I mean? Sure. So, sure. Yeah, yeah. So. You said you've been in Japan for a while. So, um, 
when when did you come here and uh, what what's your background on how you ended up in Japan? So my background is I came to Japan in July 3rd, 1996, and I came okay. because of the U.S. Uh, US Navy. I was okay. in the Navy. Um, I was in boot camp in Chicago, and they came to me and said, hey, you got special orders. And I was like, what? I didn't even know what that means because I was a rookie, no, no boot camp, no, nothing, a seaman recruit. And, yeah. and they were like, yeah, you're going overseas to be the forward deployed carrier of the USS Independence at the time. So, uh, yeah, they told me I'm going to Yokosuka. They called it Yokozuka. I didn't know how to pronounce it. I didn't know anything about Japan. Absolutely right, nothing. Right. Except for watching Ultraman on TV when I was a kid, you know. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I knew Japanese made Nintendo, which I played Super Mario Bros. And that one when I was growing up, of course. So other than that, I didn't know anything about Japan. So, um, yeah, that's how I ended up here uh, working at the on the Independence. And then after that, uh, I worked at the U.S. Navy Hospital for uh, 15 years or something like that. So. Yeah, I've been in Japan since 96, with an exception of three years in Maryland so from mm. 2015 to 18. I, I went back to the States for a while and I came back again. So, yeah, okay. that's my background. Yeah. All right. do, do you still work with the with the Navy or have you moved on? I still work with the Navy as a okay. civilian. Yes. Yeah, so, mm. yeah, I'm on a, a sofa. I'm here on sofa. So, yeah. Okay. Okay. We're under their rules. So, it's, since COVID started, I've been under their rules. So, we've been on lockdown and stuff like that. We've been ah. through. I've been on different, uh, different, um, different um i'm gonna say orders i'm sorry for saying it the military way but yeah. we've been on orders uh you know like right now i can't go go out past 8 p i'm saying this also this is public knowledge people can see this so i'm not okay. giving away any opsec or anything like that right um operational <laughs> security yeah right, right, or else right. i wouldn't say so so this is uh you know this is knowledge that people can see by themselves but uh yeah so like right now i can't go out past 8 p.m i only can travel in kanagawa so we got strict okay. rules there's a bit of a cluster on base I, I don't know if cluster is the right word yeah yeah <laughs> but uh, oh man yeah see I, I i didn't realize that um even if you you know work as a civilian there like i mean you're you do if you're under yeah, sofa yeah. you have to you have to go by what the seventh fleet uh, tells you so okay. we went on we went on a shelter in place in march mm. which we couldn't even leave the house except for three kilometers and only to get food and come right back so I, there was a time i didn't leave the house for 56 straight days not even a step out my door so uh Man. um Man, yeah I, so that I, <laughs> do you get it was cabin horrible. fever at all <laughs> uh, i was going nuts i was absolutely depressed and not on top of that there was all the things going on in the world and mm. i got sucked into to twitter and all this stuff you know yeah. the stuff that i don't you know want to be sucked into yeah. so it was just dragging me down so yeah. really when we got out of shelter in place in july um i was like all in for hiking unfortunately a month later we went back to uh they call it class charlie which is a yeah. you again you can't only travel three kilometers from your house but uh okay. we've been open and closed so i get, did get to do a little traveling and a little hmm. camping in between but um, really, I haven't been able to travel as where I, I had tickets to go to Hokkaido in October. Uh, um, I'm sorry, in in May mm. 2020, and that had to get canceled because I wasn't allowed to travel. Then we're going right. to go again in October, and that got canceled. I wasn't able to travel, so um, unfortunately, I'm still waiting to do that trip. But uh, yeah, I did get to do a few hikes, and then I did a hike in um, I did a hike in uh, July when I finally got out of the house. My first hike, we went to Mount Kintoki, which is near. I don't know if you're familiar with Hakone. I'm sure you, yeah. you heard yeah, yeah. Hakone, right? Hakone, yeah. Mm. Sure. So I did a hike in Hakone, uh, Mount Kentucky, which is only a four mile hike or something which sounds like absolutely nothing but i i felt like i was gonna <laughs> i felt like i was gonna die i feel like i climbed up fuji again i was just uh, oh wow yeah it was so horrible i was so out of shape like i said i didn't um uh, okay i didn't so, leave the house right yeah. so so kind of like you know being quarantined in your house you know you can't sure. really i mean you you get what exercise that you can but you know i mean right, you're, right. you're, you're pretty limited especially you know in japanese homes they're, they're not the most spacious um exactly you know what i mean so, kettlebells yeah. and I'm, I'm sorry i do got some kettlebells and stuff but i I'm, yeah. i don't know i was so depressed i didn't get into it like that yeah. was my own fault that was my own fault of course for, for me settings a, a big thing like my home is my relaxing area sure. so like even when i do work from home it's not a you know sometimes it's not as productive as i'd like because i get distracted by stuff you know so i get that um yeah. uh, like and i make myself i mean thankfully my gym is open now um but for right the month, on. april and may they closed and the, you know, thankfully they, they, uh, discounted my, my fee. Um, right on. A lot of people were saying yeah. they didn't. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I was like, well, thank you. You know, uh, sure. but like I have some kettlebells and, you know, and some lightweights and some barbells yeah. and stuff at, at, at home. Uh, you know, thankfully I have, um, I have like a little garden that I can work out in, you know? Oh, that's sweet. Yeah. 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 So I, I got lucky where I, I live now, but, um, you know, I, 
like just getting the motivation you know to to do exercise at home was it's it's harder Absolutely. so like when i get myself to that gym it's like well i have no other choice so you know i'm i'm there surrounded by it all and it's sure. uh, sure. you know it's easier for me to focus you know so plus during that time i mean we were watching i don't know if you're into watching joe rogan and stuff like that oh, so yeah. they were saying mm -hmm. you should you should get vitamin d and do the exercise mm -hmm. you know that's good good for you so you know that kind of motivated me to a little bit i mean a lot to finally leave the house after 56 days and go go walk in a little park you know around here and do some right. stuff like that so i i respect the people like he has on like dr Ronald patrick and if you're familiar yeah. with that people oh are, yeah oh yeah. yeah so that mm -hmm. kind of stuff like really gets me motivated and i, I really like that stuff yeah. man and it, it's funny like they you know we we talk about like uh vitamin d and, and all that and a lot of the stuff that is supposed to you know build your immune system and and, and apparently counter um not counter covid but it, you know it kind of helps your body uh be protective against it or at least it mitigates sure. the effects of it i had been supplementing that um for a couple of years now based right off on, of man. Old, older podcasts i heard from you know like Rhonda patrick and all that you know like i was doing cool. vitamin d for right. a couple of years and i've been taking you know zinc and magnesium and all that stuff perfect man yeah how many i use do you can i ask how many i use uh, vitamin d 5000 5000 wow yeah okay yep. but i take wow. it and i take it daily so um right on, so, so uh, you know so just to I, I read somewhere that vitamin d you know it kind of it can build up and stay in your system you know even if you take 5000 i use a day you're not that's a little bit more than you should but it's not mm. going to reach toxic levels but okay uh, but they said, you know, after a prolonged use, um, it may just, you know, because it stays in your body for a little bit. So during the winter months, I, I take it daily. And I would say in the summer months, I kind of cycle down to maybe every other day or every two or three days. Get you that know? natural sun. Yeah, right. sure. Yeah, I try to get as much natural sunlight. But right now, sure. yeah, daily. And then... Um, yeah, you know, I also just, you know, take some a lot of B vitamins and stuff. So just uh, awesome, man. Yeah. So this is the this is this is the kind of subject. This is the kind of thing that I I'm, I was trying to tell people like during the after the lockdown, mm -hmm. we were totally on lockdown. We they, the base puts updates on the Facebook page. So yeah. they were saying, yeah, we're going to come out of lockdown in July. And uh, people were posting on the, I mean, it's, it's Facebook, so you know what the comments look like, right? Oh, yeah. But oh, the, yeah. in the comments, people were saying, yeah, we could finally go to Costco. Like, yeah, that's why I've been waiting to go to Costco for two months. Like, this this is what you waited for to do? Go to Costco and buy a two-gallon jar of mayonnaise? I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> so, and I don't really post on Facebook or anything, but yeah, I was like, yeah. hey, you guys, there's hiking trails in Kanagawa that we can go and get some exercise, you know, saying stuff like that. Now, it was totally ignored. No one cared. Mm. So, you know, I'm like, why isn't everyone wanting, like, just urging to get outside? Like, I don't, I don't, I don't get that. Like, yeah, I, not everyone I, thinks the same, but I don't get that. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. And having been well, you know, like even as a as a kid, I was a bit of a homebody as a kid. But even then, when I got to go camping, like with my, I, like I was in the scouts for a little bit, and then, uh, like cool. when I got older, uh, you know, did some camping and you know, did fishing with my dad, and like I always enjoyed that. Even though I was kind of a, a homebody, like I I still enjoyed getting out in nature, even even then, you know, sure. and. Um, I, I didn't realize it at the time that, you know, that I just had a, I guess, a natural affinity for it. But, you know, like I said, especially since I moved to Japan and a coworker of mine got me into hiking, my first mountain to climb in Japan was uh, Shibutsu in, uh, okay. in uh, it's like the border of Gunma, Tochigi and Fukushima prefectures. Beautiful can, area. Yeah. Oh yeah. You can, and you could get a really good view of Oze. Um, oh, I love that. Oze. Yeah. yeah. yeah absolutely. That was great. So that hooked me, you know, I was like 2011, you know, cause I, I came, yeah, I came to Japan in 2008 and I didn't really, my first experience with nature here was, uh, I went, uh, whitewater rafting in, um, Kinugawa, part of Nikko. Sick. Sounds yeah. awesome. Yeah. It was fun. My second week in Japan, that was fun. And, uh, um, but then like, you know, I went to different places like, um, Miyajima, which is, I mm -hmm. guess it's called it's it's Kushima or something in near Hiroshima, right? And yeah, uh, I did a little bit of hiking there, and I thought, man, this is this is kind of cool. But I never really, you know, I didn't make it a habit. And then when my sure. coworker and I, we, you know, like about four or five of us went hiking and um, on Shibutsu, I was like, damn, I got to do more of this. And so since then, you know, I've been I've been uh, 
I used to go with groups, but now I just do solo. I find solo hikes Solo's a lot great, more, man. Yeah, yeah, a lot more therapeutic. And even though you can get in, you know, it's um, it's more dangerous, you know, if, especially if you go by mm. yourself. And but sure. I don't know about you, but for me, I can kind of I like that sense of if I get in a situation, I want to get myself out of it. Absolutely. You know, I, I know it's kind of stupid, you know, in some in some places. Not at all. <laughs> well, I mean, in some places yeah. you can really get into some deep shit. <laughs> and right, if, uh, right. I imagine if, if you're in the back country of Kamakoti or something, but usually yeah. in Japan, most places are, we, we can find our way around, I think. Well, yeah, yeah. Um, it's funny because, um, do you remember, uh, I think it was October last, uh, 2019, the big typhoon that came through? Mm-hmm, absolutely. Yeah, so it washed away a lot of um, trails up here in Tochigi. Same here, yeah, and, it's unfortunate. And I went hiking maybe six seven months after and there were still roads that were like completely either destroyed like half the road was washed away or there were landslides covering up the trail and so but the ingenuity of the hikers they they made a trail over the landslide and you know right on yeah (laughs) dedication oh yeah yeah so (laughs) so it it, and it's fun but it created some dangerous situations and i don't know about the the outdoors um bureau or whatever you know uh, of tochigi but they haven't really touched it at all they haven't at all no same and, and, same uh, here even in the major hiking trails like around kamakura the daibutsu hiking trail and stuff mm. like that the tenen trail which are really famous trails yep. they're still down they're still closed yeah so i don't okay. know but maybe because of covid it very well could be that the reason they didn't get out there and fix it but a lot yeah. of my favorite campgrounds were washed away too that were like a uh, um wild camp places that weren't really right. campgrounds that's in the forest they don't even exist anymore right, so, right. unfortunate yeah. So have you always been into outdoors and, and bushcraft? Like, And let's get into what sure. bushcraft itself is here in a little bit, because sure. a lot of people aren't familiar with the term. So um, uh, well, I, but like sure. what got you into into nature? Because you said you're from like San Francisco Bay Area. Yeah, so, right. Right. I mean, California is so, quite beautiful, but right. we have Yosemite and stuff like that. Right. Yeah. But um, but I but I didn't really grow up on that. I mean, I, I went camping and stuff like that when I was a kid with my, with my father and then mm-hmm. they took me to the Sierra Nevada mountains. And oh, yeah, I don't yeah. know, after a, after a while, you know, after 12, 13, you start growing up and you start chasing skirt and doing stuff like that. You, you don't, you know, you're not worried about that kind of thing. I, I, I t- actually went for a good uh, 15, 20 years without even hiking or camping or anything yeah. like that I, when i came to japan i you know i followed what the other sailors were doing i was going to rapungi trying yep. to make girls and doing yep. stuff like that so yep. you know, yep. i wasn't i wasn't <laughs> into it but at some point you know youtube started and i i joined youtube in 2008 i think it was 2009 something like that and i started yep. uh finding these channels like people like uh syntech 77 and uh adventure archives and stuff like that like watching mm. their videos not that far back but there was guys on there which i don't remember their names now but it was like a guy going hiking and holding his camera and saying hey, well, I'm like hiking trail how many and i'm like wow maybe i can do that you know so right. uh, and then and watching those hiking videos of him traveling around those guys traveling around somehow i ran into a guy called joe robinette i don't know if i'm familiar with bushcraft much but he's like the one of the main guys Bushcraft okay. guys on youtube he has over, over a million subscribers but okay. i got into him when he was like only had like a hundred thousand not only i mean a hundred thousand subscribers still, is great, but, still quite a bit but i mean <laughs> right, he's grown right. exponentially since right then, yeah, so. C- compared to what he was so i, I started getting into joe robin and he was talking about bushcraft i'm like what what is this bushcraft stuff so uh, he was talking about building forts in the woods and uh cool. this is stuff that we did when we were kids right like yeah. we wanted to do tree houses and go in the woods yeah, so exactly they, they, yeah right yeah. so living off that's what bushcraft is i don't um it's like Kind of, kind of like mixture of survival and using the the woods, like building a fire with just woods and uh, with just the, with just the what what you have gives, around you, yeah, what yeah. you have around you. So like mm-hmm. that, they build forts, they build a uh, pot hangers, they, anything. There's anything you can do if you have those skills. Which I don't. I don't want to say I'm a bushcrafter. I'm not. I'm into bushcraft and yeah. I'm very interested in it. But I wouldn't say I, I don't really have that much skills. I haven't got to practice it much because okay. in Japan you can't just go cut down trees, right? No, you want. no, I mean, no. It's national yeah. forest and stuff. I have learned, you know, over the years of places that we can go from Japanese other YouTubers that invited me on trips and stuff like that. But I am always hesitant to go by myself and just cut down trees because I don't know we're we're not it's not our country we're ambassadors for America you know what I mean yeah, so exactly I mm-hmm. always try not to break the rules uh 
and stuff like that. I, yeah, I just don't. Yeah. I'm not always really sure what the rules are, are, like the knife rules and stuff like that. I know you can have knives in Japan, not to go off on the knife tangent, but right. uh, that's another part of bushcraft. This bushcraft knives and axes and stuff like that. So yeah, yeah Joe Robinette. Oh, yeah, sorry. go ahead. No, no, no. Go ahead. I'm. I didn't no, I was just saying that's was my journey is getting uh, into that, and then found okay. Joe Robinette, and then later on that I found a. Uh, you know, now it's kind of silly, but Bear Grylls and mm -hmm. you know, those TV shows like that, right. Survivor Man, Les, yeah. Les Stroud, like that kind of stuff. And Les Stroud was one of the originals, you know, that went out into the woods and uh, just filmed himself surviving, you know, and not to say I'm a survivalist. I'm not really into right. that side of it, although I am a bit of a prepper. We can talk about it later if you want. But uh, <laughs> a prepper in not Japan, a, I'm not a dork no about less. it, yeah. but yeah, <laughs> yeah but, but I, yeah, yeah. And that's really when I saw Les Stroud doing it and filming himself, I'm like, wow, that's really cool stuff. So that really, hmm. really um, accelerated me in, yeah. into it. Well, cool, man. Yeah, I mean, actually, that um, I never I, I had seen things like that um, throughout the years, you know, like you said, Bear Grylls and, you know, I'd sure. seen that, but it never really attached itself to me and it didn't pique my sure. interest at all but you know um i i've once i got into hiking um i don't know if you ever followed um uh kurt bell softy papa in his early days uh he was a he lived in he lived in japan in shizuoka okay. and he did a lot of hiking just by himself out in the mountains in shizuoka and he would go to these like abandoned tea farms and like wow. he would get himself into situations where, you know, like past dark and, you know, and it, it, like, like, like we say, kind of like going out on your own and getting yourself almost intentionally in dangerous situations sure. just to figure out how to get out of it, you know? And absolutely. And, yeah. you know, he had, you know, wife and little daughter at home too. So, uh, um, but he was, he, but what I liked about him is not only would he go on these hikes, but he was, you know, very philosophical, you know, he would, it reminded me a lot of like um Thoreau and you know like wow. that that yeah. sort of stuff right awesome. and Walden's great yeah well, yeah 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 and so but he he has since moved back to the states okay um you know his family's there and actually I I did a I you know he was on the podcast a couple of years ago so if um if you want to go back and, and check Absolutely. that out but, but he still has all of his old videos up on his YouTube channel so you can go back and check I'll those out from check like it out, 2006 man. you know like way back in the day right he on. was doing this so yeah. Um, and he does stuff now where he'll, he lives in Irvine, California, oh, or maybe California. he's moved. Yeah. So okay. he's, now he goes out on his bike out into the desert and he goes on like oh, wow. a couple of days, solo camps just out in the desert, you know, awesome. and he, he's written a book about, you know, the, wow. about that. Yeah. So definitely check him out. He, he's great. So that sounds right up my alley. Cause that, that kind of person who, who as you said, he's the, um, you know the, the, the thorough stuff like that that's yeah. the kind of stuff i want to see like mm. you go to youtube now and the big youtubers in japan are the j vloggers i think you talked about this on your last episode it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah that's not the kind of stuff that i want to watch i'm not saying that's not interesting but for me i want to see real outdoorsmen doing real, real outdoor stuff talking right. about what it what it means to them and what it means to you know not not the silliness i, I don't mm -hmm. i'm not i'm not a young kid i'm mid 40s you know what i mean yeah. that's not the kind of thing i'm looking for so right uh that, anyone out out there uh doing those kind of videos I, i'll definitely check those out yeah yeah so um that's what got me into sort of you know more of the hiking youtuber stuff and so like i had found um kyushu trail who who we both you sure. know interact yeah. with um yeah and then through him i found i found your channel and i was like damn like there, right there's on. more guys out there like that are doing this <laughs> shit you know and they're doing it good yeah. you know so um sure. willie walks yeah yeah okay. yeah yeah so like um i'm once i found that and then you know the whole bushcraft thing you know you had that in there and i was like sure okay the, you know what what is this and, and i knew about like you know like as you said you prepper stuff you know all that in sure. you know the here recently you know it's not just world events but just um you know in my hikes i do a lot of thinking i'm sure you do as well and i just Absolutely. thought man i like i'm more at peace out here than i am you know driving to work and you know in the city. Yeah, you know what i mean <laughs> yeah and so like i thought an ideal life would just be if i can like be self-sustained you know do self-sustainable not necessarily man. off grid not sure. necessarily off grid but just kind of far enough away to not deal with people but you know 100%. still you know yeah. what i mean so um absolutely 
and grow your own food you know like it sounds like you said kind of hippie-ish but like to me no. that's that's I'm, a, I'm more at peace i almost considered once if i ever moved back to the states i would be like a a park ranger or something just so i could just be out in the natural uh in the that'd be great right natural yeah. forest you know you know that'd be awesome but we well, hear joe rogan talk about all the time like hunting and eating the, the meat you know that he yeah. caught that's you mm -hmm. know it's it's natural it doesn't have hormones or anything in there like yeah. man we want to do that kind of stuff too like you know yeah I mean? like, so yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 um you know I, i've been i you know i used to fish a lot with my dad as a kid and he took me hunting a few times but as a kid i was always you know i love animals and i was always i couldn't bring myself to pull the trigger i'm still that way you I've know never what i mean killed an animal yeah. <laughs> yeah 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 so but if i was starving i probably could but i that hunting's not something i really want to do yeah yeah <laughs> i'm i'm kind of against trophy hunting absolutely but yeah, like if if it came to survival of course i would probably you know i i would um I could probably do it, you know. Sure um, you could. Yeah. yeah, and uh, but I, you know, I, like I said, I I just have an affinity, f you know, for animals. So like, it would it would be painful, but at the same time, it would be I would probably be more respectful for you know to it, you know. Absolutely. Not not let it w go to waste and all that stuff. You know. Yeah. 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 But um, yeah, so like, I also found some other channels. Um, was it my? my self-sustained life or something he, he was quite a big my self-reliance my self-reliance that's it yeah yeah, yeah. sean yeah. james he's the man yeah i, I love Definitely. watching like you know he's building like these cabins in the forest yeah you know what I mean? awesome so, stuff right there yeah 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 so that's cool man so so that you got into this back in like more than 10 years ago then right more than 10 years ago yeah. and, and you know what all this ties together like you know, sean james you're talking about him building cabins mm -hmm. it kind of got me on a journey of trying to find what what did they do in Japan? Did they have cabins mm -hmm. in Japan? Like I've been looking around and I'm like, no, they didn't really have cabins, right? They don't not, not that there's there's cabins on mountains and stuff, but it's a totally different style. Or it yeah. got me thinking when the samurais, I talked about this in one of my videos. I'm sorry for regurgitating this again, that's, but uh, uh, that's right. um it's a what did they do when they walked on the Tokaido road, you know, from Kyoto to Tokyo, how did they sleep at night? How did they, did they camp? I wanted to know, like, how did they camp? What kind of tents did they use? I want to know the history of about it. So, right. um, and asking Japanese, like my coworkers, they're not interested, interested in it. like, I don't know, man. But uh, some people were telling me that they, maybe they went into real cons like that along the road. But what if you didn't have money? Did you just camp under the stars? Did you have any tents? I want to know, the history like the japanese we um, america we have woodsmen or we have frontiersmen what were the mm -hmm. frontiersmen in the japanese era and in, in the in the era of the meiji period what were yeah. frontiersmen but there was none there was just survival they were just samurais fighting you know warfare i i don't right. know i want at some point like we we know that there was the jomon period right if you remember oh yeah jomon. there's a jo yeah there's a jomon place just right down the road for me that's uh, that's awesome it, i love that jomon stuff yeah. the pit dwellings and stuff mm -hmm. like that so mm -hmm. that's kind of their native americans not to say it's exactly the same but but kind of their native americans the joman and yoyoi and then the uh the ainu people of course the hokkaido yeah. which is absolutely fascinating to me that's oh, the yeah, kind of yeah. stuff i want to learn about and uh make youtube videos about but it's hard because i don't really know about it and i don't want to i don't want to act like i always say in my videos like i don't know nothing about nothing like don't mm -hmm. trust me i'm just telling you what i have learned about and i'm passing on to you and hopefully you can uh find out about it so like the, the joman there's a mm. jump sorry there's a joman near my house and i, I don't know have you ever heard of geo geocache oh yeah <laughs> oh yeah I, I, i've so tried it a bit around utsunomian and um you know i've, I've found it's few, pretty fun like it, caches it, here there yeah so it'll, it'll take you to places that you didn't know so like you said you have a joman near your house there's one mm -hmm. near my house that i didn't even know existed but the geocache took me there and i was like what what is this i didn't even know about jomon or anything but since yeah. then i went on down a long journey i actually have a jomon video which did pretty good actually in a yeah. um that kind of stuff is just fascinating what is their native american what is their i mean i know we're totally different cultures but at right. some point like our bushcraft to the japanese was just life right like uh, right. i went to shirakawa go which i'm sure you're familiar with shirakawa go mm -hmm. in the mountains of uh, um, gifu is it, 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 yeah it cut on fire recently right oh did it i didn't I, know that i think oh. so i think so I, oh, wow. I, I might be wrong but i think it cut on fire but uh so, so you go in those houses the gashu style i don't know but i said that right that the gashu it, style like the, the praying the, hand houses is that with like the grass roof yes that, exactly yeah. mm -hmm. so you go in there and you're like is this bushcraft they built this out of grass and wood you know what mm -hmm. i mean like mm -hmm. this is 
to them it was just life we it doesn't have a name or anything like that but it's right. all same things that native americans are doing the styles might be a little different i mean they had tps but the the the, the norwegians were doing but i think norwegians yeah. and the swedes were the ones who created bushcraft so it somehow yeah. it spread around the world you know what i mean that's the kind of thing i'm really interested in yeah yeah so this kind of survivalist sort of uh, sort sure. of thing so but see some there, there's um for you and me we probably understand but to like you said you know when you're bringing up you know um to people on on facebook you know like why aren't, why aren't you going out hiking you know like i find like it, i hope it doesn't come across as um condescending to people but like a lot of everyday people aren't really concerned about that, you know, like they they're just, not, they're, they're focused yeah. on their life and, and their job and, you know, which understandable, like if they got a busy life or if, you know, whatever, then, you know, um, they, they focus on what is important to them. But right. Uh, at least up here in Tochigi, I see a lot of hikers. There's a lot of, a right uh, lot of hikers, right lot, you know, to um, of all ages too, you know, young, young couples out there, older people, um, hear it. I've even seen, you know, a trope of, um, of grandmas, you know, hiking around. Oh, like, oh, that's oh cool. man. You know, don't so. tell me about the old town. Obis town. They're so good. They're so strong. They'll be in their seventies and eighties and they, mm -hmm. they pass me. I mean, uh, not that I'm anything special, but they, they are fast. I'm like, yep. wow, you guys are strong. Dude. Yep. Yep. So. And so I, I, I love that. I love that there's in Japan, there's more of a hiking. Well, I wouldn't say there's more of a hiking culture, but like in the U.S., the hiking culture seems to be limited to younger people, you know, like 20s, right. 30s, 40s, you know. Right. But there are some people on the Appalachian Trail or something like that. But yeah, mostly yeah. it's younger. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And uh, but here you'll find people like families hiking together, like husbands, Whole wives families. And, their, and their kids, you know, like, or, 100%. you know, grandparents are there, too. So it's it's I love that about um, about you know here in japan there is a large subculture of of, of hikers and, sure. and it's a beautiful country you know it's a it's apparent this is a country that's made for it you know so it's made for it and it's, mm -hmm. it's so they're all about nature like we like we said earlier about the the, the buddhas or the uh the uh, shinto oh yeah. the shinto you know it's mm. it's they're they're worshiping nature when they're there and i always say that people i don't have you ever hiked around this area have you been to tokyo I'm i've i've been to kamakura and i've hiked a, a little okay. bit around kamakura but not well, there's too a mountain much, yeah. in, Mm -hmm. There's a mountain in Tokyo called Mount Takao, and yeah. it's a really famous mountain because it's close, very close to Tokyo, and it's not a big mountain at all. In fact, you can take a cable car halfway up if you want. You don't even have to have hiking gear. So, but uh, I, I was thinking about Mount Takao, like how important is that mountain? How how many people went to Mount Takao for their first adventure outdoors? That they they were a little kid and their family took them up there to Mount Takao, and they right. saw their first. You see Mount Fuji from the top. How many people have they motivated to get into hiking that little mountain? Like all these people, the Tokyoites, how many people was Mount Takao, their first experience in nature? I wonder, yeah. I'd really like to know that. Like yeah. That that started off. So sometimes I tell people, yeah, I went to Mount Takao. And they're like, Mount Takao, like, you're too good for Mount Takao, man. People do that to me about Mount Fuji. I'm like, yeah, I climbed Mount Fuji three times. Like, oh, Mount Fuji, that's nothing. You can climb Mount Fuji with the Hello Kitty backpack and flip flops. I'm like, okay, all right. Yeah. You're disrespectful. <laughs> like, yeah. I don't like that stuff, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so to me, you know, it, it's not a contest of, oh, oh, what did you climb? It's like, no, like not a contest. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, Mount, like I haven't climbed Mount Fuji yet just because, oh, the, the one year I actually did plan on climbing it, there was the weekend that I had set aside for it and I had time to do it. There was, you know, lightning storms all over the mountains. Oh, no. I was like, man, yeah, just safe, my luck, safe. man. Yeah. yeah. And I was like, nah, I'm not going to do that. So, and I always told myself, if I do it, I'm going to start, I'm not going to go halfway up. I'm going to start at the base of the mountain. My and coworkers did that last yeah. year. And I was like amazed by it. Like I, I, I don't have the stamina for that yet. Yeah. I have to build up oh. for it, but yes, yeah. they did it. And they were, and I'm, I'm quite jealous actually. Yes. Yeah. So that's how I, I want to do it to me. That's a proper way to do it. I'm not saying if you go up halfway and, and do it, it's not right. I mean, you, everyone has their own you. way of doing sure. it, you know, but right. If I do it, I that's how I want to do it. You know what sure. I mean? And, uh, but I, I got to build up to that. And, to me, it's like Fuji's sure. like my grand finale. A lot of people, that's the only mountain they ever climb in Japan and good for sure. them. I mean, that's great. That That's that's sure. the that's the big daddy, you know? So, um, but for me, that's kind of like my send off, you know? Like I, like there, there's, you know, I'm sure you're familiar with the Hyaku Maze on the 100 famous mountains in Japan. Yeah, absolutely. absolutely. Tochigi has its own 
hunt Yaku Mezo. I mean, they're they're tiny, you know, four hundred right, meters. Right, right, but, right, right. But I, yeah, you know, I, I all try, prefectures have it. Yeah. Yeah. So, but I try and hit all the mu- all the minor ones that I can, just because. Right on. You know, like to me, something to strive I've, for. Yeah, I've learned more about just um, all the little nooks and crannies of Tochigi Prefecture that even people live born here and live grew up here. Like, I didn't know about that. You know, you know more <laughs> about this place than I do. And I'm like, sure. I just go out and explore, man. You know, so just go out and explore. Yep. I tell that to my all the time, my coworkers. I'm like, where'd you go this weekend? I'm like, yeah, I went to camping in Okutama. They're like, what? Nobody goes to Okutama or I'm just talking about areas and around here. And then they're mm-hmm. like, it's, yeah, they're just, they're just surprised by that. We're out here exploring this stuff and they're not into it, but yeah. And, and it's always nice seeing um, other people out there hiking, especially their reaction when they see me. <laughs> they, yeah, you know, right. They're, right. Yeah, and they're you know. really cool. Aren't they? Like, yeah. Yeah, they're like, yeah. oh, konnichiwa, what are you doing? Where are you from? I'm like, yeah. what are you doing out here? And you're like, they, they always want you to say uh, Japan is beautiful. But it mm-hmm. is beautiful. They want to hear it. They're, Japanese are really um, patriotic, the word. But uh, mm-hmm. they, they, they love to well, hear. They're, they're, um, proud, of their, they're, they're proud, proud of their country. Which and, they and should be. That's was, not a negative. Which they I should was going to say, <laughs> there's a lot to be proud of of this country, you know? Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah, so. Absolutely. So I think it, it makes them feel good when we say, yeah, we're out here. Oh, kidene. Like, oh, it's so beautiful. And they're like, oh, you like it? Oh, come on in. Like, all yeah. right. I'm, yeah. So I, I love that stuff and interacting with Jeff. Especially like I meet oji sans up there and talk yeah. to them and share mm-hmm. a sandwich with. Or sometimes they got a flask of whiskey or something. Like, wow, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. cool, man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's great it's great the the random people you meet and um sure um so like um how many places in japan have you actually been hiking and in terms of i guess prefectures or mountains or you know i mean you've been doing this for a while so i can't say exactly but i mean I've not, been not like a specific from... number right but <laughs> no but i mean i've been everywhere from hokkaido to the very bottom of okinawa at iriomote okay. island which is mm-hmm. one of the most beautiful places on earth so um i haven't really hiked and i plan on going to beppu and kyushu soon uh, whenever i'm allowed so i'm gonna hike the uh, kuju mountain range where mount aso and stuff like that mm-hmm. but i've hiked uh, quite a lot in the Nikko area my, my main home base is really um yamanashi prefecture which is the okay. fuji five lakes stuff like mm-hmm. that that's um my main base and also the tanzawa mountain range which is uh mount tanzawa mount tonadake mm-hmm. so all, everything's close to mount fuji and uh, shizoka also which is really close to me all these places i mean like going back to watching youtube and syntax 77 and i was watching this guy and I always thought like, oh, that's too far for me to go. Like, that's a long drive. But he used to drive like from um, Philadelphia area all the way down to Tennessee or something just for a hike. And that really motivated me to say, hey, I I can do stuff like that. Like when I was in Maryland, I drove from Maryland to uh, upstate New York just for a hike and then came back that same day. So um, I do that in Japan now. Now, Yeah, now I'm like, uh, I'm going to drive four hours to Oze. I could do yep. that. That's nothing. Four hours is nothing. So yeah, yeah, I, I'm, yeah, I'm one hour. Like I said, I'm one hour from Shonan with the beach, which I love doing a paddleboard and stuff like that too. So, and then I'll, I'm also one hour, one an hour and a half from uh, going to Yamanashi prefecture. I could be at Mount Fuji in, you know, an hour and a half. So that's cool. That's my home base. Yeah. I mean, you're, you're in a cool spot. Like I'd love to, my, my goal is uh, to cl- uh, climb mountains, but to hike more in your area as well as, uh, you know, like Nagano and uh, Nagano's great and, yeah, too. Yeah. I also go there yeah yeah so there's some great camping areas in Nagano and uh that's a, that's what I'm split like uh, if I, I gotta go on a trip I, I work uh, I'm an office worker let's say that I'm not a salary man but I work five days a week like a regular during the normal days I mean I'm right. working at home now and mm-hmm. most of the time but uh so weekend is my thing so I gotta plan like am I gonna go for a hike or am I gonna go for a camp I you know you really gotta decide what you're gonna do because Japan's not where you can just climb a mountain and set up a tent in most no, places, no. not like the states, you can just go for it, right? But uh, here, you got to camp in the specific area most of the time. Sometimes yeah. you can find other places. So yeah, I tried to decide what I'm going to do this weekend. Am I going to go camping or hiking or am I going to paddleboard or snowboarding? Or it's it's tough. It's tough. No. Yeah. So uh, out of all of your hikes, I, I think I mentioned this in in um, one of my earlier shows about hiking, uh, uh, like a dangerous situation that sure. that I got into. Um, what is the um, if you've had one, what's the most dangerous situation you've gotten into and how'd you get out of it? Uh, in Japan? Yeah, uh, in Japan or uh, maybe just hiking in general. Yeah. I got lost in Dolly Sods, West Virginia once. That was a little okay. bit scary. So, uh, but but I, I knew there was a fire road somewhere, so I did end no, up. But no I never bandit, really. 
no banjo music playing in the background. <laughs> <laughs> no banjo music. Yeah, so. okay. West Virginia is actually very beautiful. I'm, I'm yeah. surprised. No, I've, like, I've yeah. seen it. Yeah, it's, 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 I mean, I've never it's been there, but I've seen photos and it's, it looks beautiful. It's unbelievable. Yeah. But yes, that's the idea of what I got when I thought of West Virginia. But once that, now that I've been there, I'm like, well, okay, I won't make fun of it. But uh, um, in <laughs> well, Japan. People make fun of Texas all the time. So I'm, I'm that's true. Yeah. <laughs> that's true. And Texas is great. Yeah. I've been there. Yeah. yeah. So uh, um, I wouldn't say anything dangerous in Japan, really. I mean, hmm. um, I was so out of shape the first time I climbed out Fuji. I had a tough time, but uh, yeah. nothing dangerous. So, Did you get uh, like thought, altitude sickness or something up there? Or no, yeah. I I mean it, maybe in my head I was thinking like, oh my god, I can't breathe. Plus back then I was like a heavy smoker, so and mm. you know they're like, yeah, get oxygen. And I'm glad I didn't because uh, you see people and they're sucking on oxygen now. You're like, oh my god, it's only twelve thousand feet. I mean, right. uh, Mount Everest base camp, sixteen thousand feet, right? So uh, right. Mm. <laughs> a little embarrassing. But if you need it, take it. I'm not uh, shitting on anyone. Yeah, I mean they're they're trying yeah. it, you know. So they're trying it exactly. So. Well, I know there's yeah, no, like I'm a, sorry. Yeah. yeah, go ahead. No, I was gonna say no dangerous situations that I can think of. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Uh, no, have you ever encountered like a wild animal out here in Japan, like the, a bear yeah, or a wild know, boar? Yeah. I've seen yes, I've seen all that. I've, I've pretty much seen everything. I've seen the the cerro, the like the little I, I don't know the exact name. I think they call it cerro or something like that. But mm. uh, I've seen wild boar in Tanzawa mountain range, deer of course, white tail all the time. Oh yeah, the, the deer uh, snakes. everywhere here. Yeah. I've never oh. came across the bear though. Nope. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um, there, there was a story a few years ago about a guy in, it was a Gunma maybe who, um, 70 year old man who encountered a bear sure. in, on his hike and he karate chopped it in the face and it ran off or something. I don't know. Like <laughs> what? Yeah. He was like, <laughs> damn. Yeah. I was like, damn grandpa, you know, like, <laughs> that, that's how you get rid of the bears, you know, but the bears here, I mean, they're still probably dangerous but sure. they're, they're not really that big compared to what we sure. imagine as bears, you, you know? Do, you do hear bear of bear attacks, of course, you know, yeah. and it's mostly like an old lady working in her field or something like that. So yeah. Hokkaido's a different story, though. They got the big brown bears, right? So yeah. I, I used to hike with, when I first got into hiking with the, you know, the Japanese have the bear bell. We don't really have that in the States, right? Yeah. The bear, yeah. And, but the, recently I stopped using the bear bell. I'm not really uh, feeling. I haven't bad, really, I've never used it, to be honest, maybe. You know, I, I felt I've never needed, I've never encountered a bear yet. Um, I always see the signs for it, but the, sure. the, the worst, you know, I've encountered, you know, a random monkey here or there. <laughs> That's about oh, the monkeys. Yeah. They're everywhere. Yeah. in Nagano. Yeah. yeah. I'd like so, to see a bear actually. I'd like to get one on film, <laughs> my, right? my channel out, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, as long as he's know, over there, you know, <laughs> right. Well, what I heard is I think the most dangerous one, animal to encounter here is the wild boar you know they'll, they'll mm -hmm. attack you the bears are pretty much too. you know kind of scared of you you know so yeah i saw a little a wild boar when i was in tanzawa mountain range the other time it was a baby he ran right by us and then i don't like my mother must be around here somewhere but i don't want to mess with that <laughs> yeah, yeah no kidding yeah yeah <laughs> yeah so now you you've been hiking obviously other places you know than japan um where in the states have you been hiking? Because there's a lot of cool trails to go hiking all over the state, all over the country, you know. So well, I was in Maryland uh, mm -hmm. from 2015 to 18, so that's right around the time I really got into YouTube. I had a YouTube channel um, before that, as I mentioned. I think I signed up 2008, 2009, mm -hmm. but I didn't really put anything on there. Just junk. I didn't. I didn't know how to make videos or anything. Not that I know how to make videos now, but I'm trying. But uh, oh, yeah, man, you, I, I, uh, I like I like your the, your style of videos. You know, to oh, you're be honest. Very kind. Yeah, it's uh, yeah, it's. I appreciate that. But uh, yeah, I got into um, hiking in the Maryland. I, actually, um, I, I read the book called uh, A Walk in the Woods. I don't know if you're familiar with that. They made it into a movie, which is kind of a terrible movie. But the book was really great. And uh, it was a guy hiking the Appalachian Trail. And that okay. got me like, oh, I would love to get on the Appalachian Trail. And it just so happens the Appalachian Trail goes through Maryland. So okay. the people that aren't familiar with the Appalachian Trail, it's from Georgia to Maine. Uh, the hiking trail that people do usually takes three to six months or something to hike. Yeah. So I did get to go on that. I was very close to Shenandoah national park in virginia um i hiked it as i mentioned earlier i went up to new york to catskill mountains to hike west virginia all, all around uh, i hiked when i was uh, in the states I, everywhere on the east coast north carolina i even went down to georgia for some uh, little hiking so yeah yeah so that appalachian trail is one i'd, I'd like to do but uh oh, like kind of like fuji it's like man i, I want to set aside like three months and just do the whole thing you, you know what i mean dedicated because so, <laughs> yeah. you're not working right you got to be dedicated yeah. to do yeah. that and uh, sleep in hostels sometimes and stuff like that so right now or the just, pct yeah yeah i mean i don't have the 
the time, the money. Plus, I can't really travel there right now. So right, you know, right, so, right, 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 right. Um, but something to strive for in the future, you know, if you wanted, yeah. if you wanted to do that. So. Hell yeah. Um, yeah. And here, the Slovenian trail in um, in mm -hmm. Eastern Europe is is really beautiful as well. Man, there's so many trails. I yeah. want to do them all. <laughs> well, I, I mean, can, I, I'd I, like to go yeah. to you know South America, Peru, Machu Picchu. You know, like oh I'm, my god, there's so many yeah. places that I'd like to go, and I'm like, god it's damn. endless, right? Like, <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but yeah. I feel like I'm I'm getting older. At some point, it's going to be like I need to do the car, get into the car camping stuff. Actually, I one of the I started a YouTube channel and I, I, mm -hmm. it was going to be a, a, a camping car, it was like an RV channel because I I did have an RV. I had a a, a high ace. Ask you I had about a that. Yeah, yeah, I had yeah. a high ace. Um, I had it converted. Everything in there was so sweet. It was one of the best best a uh, few months of my life when i had it but it ended up got stolen man like how, okay <laughs> okay tell the story yeah. behind that because i because i saw a picture of that i was like damn you you really pimped that out man and then oh man did you say it got that stolen like what was it don't we was that here in japan it they got in stolen. japan it was here in yokohama man it's what like, the hell uh, what what happened with that <laughs> Cause that's rare, oh, you know. You get a car heart. stolen. About, it, <laughs> I know, I know. It's a painful memory, you know. <laughs> the only two things I've ever had happen in Japan is one got my car stolen, and mm -hmm. once my wife got a perch snatch, snatched by a motorbike. Yeah. Other than that, Japan's yeah. all safe. So I don't want to sound like I'm complaining here, but yeah. that bastard stole my car, and I'll never forgive him. So I just parked out here in front of my house, and then I learned later that Hiaces, Toyota Hiaces. Mm -hmm are the number one stolen car in Japan. I don't know if it's still like that, but it, it's probably way up there. So uh -huh. apparently they, the cops stole us, they stole it, drove it. I live in Yokohama, uh -huh. uh, which is a port city. So they stole it, drove it straight to the part, to the port, put it in a shipping container and either send it to the Philippines or Dubai. So they use them uh, for government people because they hold like 13 passengers okay. right mine didn't because when he stole it he probably didn't know it was a camping car yeah. right but it, it didn't have seats in there or anything it had bed like a bed and refrigerator and kitchen right. and all that so God, um, yeah that, shit oh, man, that, that's that, that, that sounds <laughs> painful now i've heard of like you know um people's you know high-end cars you know like someone will come at night and just just steal the car at nighttime you know i, I you know like i um the mafia or something will do it but sure you know I, i've never heard of you know just someone's high ace being jacked right and, you know well that's so. what they were it was a network you know to to be able to put it in the shipping container send it right out they were right. at, they were like little uh chimpita punks you know the, the lowest of the lowest of the yakuza you know yeah They'd go do that and they actually caught the guy a year later they found our I think they found our license plate in his junkyard or something like that so Man, but it was so, a year later we already had the insurance and stuff like that but, yeah uh, but i mean you got some sort of justice out of it right so yeah, stay back. No, yeah, but you, <laughs> yeah. you still got so that's a sore spot. Yeah, <laughs> because I I want that back. Like that was the greatest time that of of when I was in Japan. We travel around just to leave on a Friday night after work and head out and stay at a Michinoeki if you're familiar. With hell yeah, hell yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, it's like that's cool, bro. That's like mm -hmm. that's you you know you're out there. You stay at a Michinoeki. You can stay at a campground if you have time. But if you don't, you just stop at the roadside station. The yeah. new ones have Wi-Fi and stuff. Not that yeah. that's a real thing. We don't need Wi-Fi to be out in nature, but uh, it's kind of cool when it's you're a chilling, convenience. You know? Yeah, exactly. It's a convenience. Yeah. It's, it's, it's convenient so that's yeah. what i'm into that's i, I did that the uh, my my um uh, hokkaido video that i did in uh, october 2019 we went mm. to hokkaido sapporo rented the rv and drove around cool. for five days which wasn't nearly enough uh, to explore hokkaido but yeah. uh yeah we did that and that was really fun so yeah. i love camping car and so our they call it camping car but it's RV yeah or, yeah yeah I, i'd like to get one myself uh someday um hold that thought uh i'll be right sure. back uh your nat thing, man. nature calls so <laughs> i got you man yeah yep. take your time
Hi, man. Sorry about that. Oh, not at yeah. all. You said yeah. you're in Tochi. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. You want to start again? No, go ahead. Uh, okay. Yeah, you, I'm Tochigi. You say you're yeah. in Tochigi. So mm -hmm. you're in the Nico area or? Yeah, yeah. So I live in Utsunomiya City. Um, okay. But yeah, I can drive up to Nico um, near like Toshogu in that, that area. That's like 23 kilometers away. Um, There's so. some straight great mountains that you probably already know. I'm sorry for telling you this if you already know, but uh, above uh, Mount uh, Chuzan, Chuzan Zico and stuff. Mm -hmm. You're familiar with mm -hmm. that area? Oh, yeah. Um, that's, that's, uh, I've, I've climbed a lot of mountains up there. Oh, right on. I've, I've right climbed on. Nantai twice, which is very visible all over Tochigi, pretty much. Right on. So, uh, it's not the tallest mountain in Tochigi, but it's one of, it's the most visible. Um, I guess you could consider Sh Nico Shirane part of Tochigi. It's on the border of Gunma and okay. Tochigi, but it's actually the tallest mountain in all of Kanto. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. And um, I uh, I climbed that in 2014. That, I think that may have been the first solo hike I did, and it's the tallest one, but uh, Damn. yeah, it's, it. <laughs> it, oh man, it's some of the most beautiful, like I have some yeah. recent pictures uh, on my Instagram. So I found my, some old photos. I, I love your Instagram, there. by the way. Beautiful Thank you. Pictures. Yeah. Thank you. So I, I want to talk to you about photography too, because uh, sure. I'm, I'm just now starting to get into that. And mm. so I, I really, you, you, you probably know more about the cameras than I do. So, but um, I, I, I kind of want to pick your brain on that too, but sure. No, I, I went hiking in um, Nico Shirane about to 20 summer of 2014 and that was that was amazing it, it's just everywhere you look is beautiful and it, it's very diverse you know it's a very diverse mountain Absolutely. And, um once you get to the top on a clear day it would have been amazing and it was clear it was sunny but there was just mm. a lot of uh, it was summertime you know japanese summers are ah, you know, the worst uh, yeah clouds <laughs> yeah. and haze you know sure. so right uh but man the the, the little lake on there is is just pure blue you know, there's oh, the, yeah. the deer, you could, you could walk up to the deer and they're, they're not skittish. They're not scared. You know, they're, so they're great. just, yeah. And they're not begging for food. They're just like chilling, you know? So, um, but that, that hike, so I started maybe eight o'clock in the morning and it took about four and a half hours to climb up mm, to the top. That's a good hike. Yeah. <laughs> and then about, I took another way down. So there's multiple paths, right? And that's took, the best. That's yeah. the best. And the way down, it took me about five hours. So it was like a nine oh, and a half. Yeah, wow. it was a nine and a half. Well, I stopped a lot to, you know, just uh, take pictures and, sure. and just enjoy where I, because there's, it's, there's like in between each trail, there's like these big open areas and it's like a completely new scene. So you kind of want to take it's that great. all in and, and look around and before you move on, you know? So a lot Heck of it yeah. was me just, you know, um, not, you know, just not going straight down the path, right you know, which is, I don't think any, one who hikes really does that, you know, so, uh, right, right. Just put I your see, head down and go you smell yeah. the roses while you're there. Yeah. Yeah. I see trail runners though, especially on Nantai. Uh, they, they These have guys no hardcore. Yeah. No, no, no sticks. No, they're just uh, jogging down no. the mountain. I'm like, damn, you know, so, <laughs> but they're, um, there's a blue, like blue water. I'm, I'm sorry. Speaking yeah. of blue water and stuff, you, you must be fairly close to Goshikinuma. Are you familiar with that? Oh yeah. And, that's uh, uh, yeah. Goshikinuma yeah. is actually near Niko Shirane. That's uh, the that's five of... color lakes. Okay. Yeah. yeah that's yeah, a, yeah. that's a great area. I hiked over there mm -hmm. not too long ago. It's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, all around, uh, Chuzinji Lake is a lot of cool mountains. You know, I climbed sure. Shazan about, um, a little over a year ago, 2019. That was good. And then there's a few others, uh, but, um, yeah, Nico, man, Nico's, Nico's a great place. Um, Jose the, is on my hit list, which I didn't get to do. I mean, I went, I visited Jose and saw mm -hmm. the boardwalk and stuff. Yeah. And we saw the, the bear sign and we're like, mm, not right now. We're not ready. But, the, now, now that I looked it up and I'm like, uh, I got to do this hike. So yeah. I want, I want to camp there. People stay at the rest oh, yeah. stops. Right. But I, I want to actually pitch a tent and I heard you can do that. So yeah, that's what yeah, I'm yeah. some parts of, uh, Jose you can, um, I know, uh, up near Nico, Senjo Gahara is kind of like a mini version of that. It's, when I say mini, okay. it's like really, really tiny version of that. Um, but it's up past Nantai, like you're in between like Yumoto on Onsen. Okay. And it, apparently the history of Senjo Gahara is uh, a giant centipede and a giant snake Ooh, fought. I love those stories. Yeah. Heck yeah. <laughs> and and the aftermath was this Senjo was this moor. Like I guess it's not a swamp it's a moor if, if that's you know mm -hmm. makes any sense but it's Sendro sure. Gahara and it's just 
even in the lush green times, it it looks like sort of a a burnt out sort of kind of almost like an eeriness to it. You know what I mean? So sounds beautiful. Of course, always... of course it's yeah, beautiful, especially in the fall. If you if you ever go up to Nico in the fall, I know a lot of people do, but it's uh, it's one of the most beautiful places in Japan. I Absolutely, yeah. Nico mm-hmm. is great. It's, it's you see pictures of postcard Nico. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, and uh, but the that like you're saying about the centipede and stuff. I always want to do the hikes that have that tied to it. You know, like some kind of story tied to it. Like right. Naguma is the. I'm sure you're familiar with the the um, one that's on my list that I re- that I really wanted. Damn. One that's on my list that I really want to do is. Um, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear. You I'm fine. sorry. Mm-hmm. Okay, one. I'm <laughs> sorry, repeating this, but uh, you heard of? I think it was a JL or I don't know if it's a JL or Anna, but flight one two three that crashed in uh, Guma Mountains. Oh yeah. like no, no. I, oh, in the eighties. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so I think uh, yeah. it was eighty nine. I don't get me right. Right. The, the, the plane crashed. And there's a site in the mountains where the plane crashed. I want to hike to that site. You know, so I got the story of. Uh, I want to tell the sto- Tell the story of that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh hell yeah, like that. man! That that sounds right. cool, man. Like, let me right? know when you does... do that. I'm, I might want to join you on that one. That, yeah. That'd be cool. We should do yeah. that then. We'll we'll, yeah. let, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about cool. it. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that one, and then also like Aokigahara Forest. Like, not. I know it has a bad name. People go there. Like, you search Aokigahara. Don't, don't be on Jake YouTube. Paul, right? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. Right. Even now, you search yeah. Aokigahara. The top video is like, I found a dead body. Like, to- total total bullshit. You know what I mean? Like, mm. Aokigahara to me is like, I, I, you go in there and you, you feel. You, as you mentioned earlier, the magical was a good word. Like I, I yeah. feel, I feel, I feel life in Alcagara. Like it's, right. it's just, I mean, you got the green, it's so lush green, the moss, and then you got mm-hmm. the trees growing on top of the, the, the lava from the Mount Fuji. So, it, right. you know, out of death that the, the lava life. flow went there, yeah. life grew on top of it. So yeah. that, that's a story to me. That's what I look for. It's a story. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm with you, like, um, you know, I'm, I'm not particularly, any specific uh, religion, you know, you know, I had one that I grew up, but like I, sure. the older I get, the, the more, you know, I, I relate to, you know, being out in nature. So it's, it's almost like, sure. um, you know, like you said, you know, it's a place of death, you know, a lot of suicides happen in that forest, but sure. you know, a lot of those, I guess, souls, if you want to say, I don't know, you know, how, no, that's... how far you want to get into that. No, I would agree with that. Those, <laughs> yeah. All those souls are still, maybe in there in, in some sure. way and so there's there's there is a life to it you know so um there is yeah, yeah. so it's a it's it's very interesting like um you know i've been hiking in in the states you know colorado's absolutely gorgeous love that i'd like to go to um, montana montana oh, somewhere yeah. yeah bro yes yeah um but even down in like um arizona too you know like beautiful i uh, i watched you watch youtube <laughs> you know yeah, you, utah yeah, Zion, yeah definitely. You know, man there are so many places you know so, but so many places yeah out of those places though like it's breathtaking and i've been there but japan is the only one that left me feeling like there's something left over i get it I, like you know what i mean and, and, I get it yeah and i'm sure there's other places in the world like that but it's just there's a there's something else around here that's uh, my co-worker told me that i and this is getting into the religious stuff but my co-worker told me that you go into places like that a soul goes into you and a piece of them is into you so i don't know like i don't want to sound silly about this but like sometimes like the first time i went to osaka castle Mm -hmm. i don't know why but tears ran down my face and it felt like like i was here before like something yeah something i don't i don't know what it is something was here before and i feel like that in the woods sometimes in nature in japan like i, I was here before i don't know what it is mm-hmm. what draws you in like that but it's something mm-hmm. mystical that sucks you in like uh, i don't yeah. know what it is i it's, get what you're it, saying yeah it's it's interesting man so like the area where um where my business is it's built near utsunomiya's castle park and oh, right on and yeah. actually <laughs> It's new. It doesn't really have a castle anymore. It, there's uh, there's a the replica. Browns, right? Yeah, yeah. Sure. It's a replica built of what used to be there. Sure. Um, but basically, that was the site of a major war during the Boshin Wars. You know, so there's a lot of death that happened in the grounds around that. Right. You know, because right. you you see an old model. They have, they have a mini museum there. There's an old model of what it looked like back. You know, in Edo and Meiji times, right? And and there was, you know, a major war fought there. So there's a lot of death and destruction there. And sure. so even around the little neighborhoods around there, you know, there's still 
something in the air you know that there's something happened here yeah something happened here so that's what i feel about like when i'm camping like people are like how's japan you did you go to akihabara or these you know these these shinjuku like Mm -hmm. that's what you're interested in like i i understand like people that aren't haven't been in japan that's what they are interested in at first tokyo and stuff like that but i'm like if you really want to get the true essence of japan and i said this in a video (laughs) before but the when I sit on a, a river bank or something and just watch the river going by, mm-hmm. I'm saying this is the same exact view as a samurai sat on this spot. Yeah. You know, not even a samurai, a village or anybody. Anyone, like this yeah. view is exactly the same. There's no building here. There's nothing uh, Japanese from 1700s or way before. You know, it, this is I'm seeing exactly what they yeah. say. So so that's, you kind of get the spirit of what it meant. You know what I mean? To be I think I think that's that's what it is. I think that's, you know, the people in a bygone time have experienced the same thing and so you kind of connect with that um there are there are two japans really i mean and don't get me wrong i do like a lot of the cities of japan like sure. one of my favorite things sure. to do is you know nighttime city life photography sure. you know like when, when, when yeah. i got into that so I, it's kind of my i so i guess um I, i'm really into like um like taoism you know you know chinese eastern philosophy as well you know sure. and so I always feel there's a sort of duality to everything in life. And even in like my hobby of, you know, my, of doing photography, like I love taking nature and landscape for, you know, photographs, but also nightlife and busy city lights, you know, so Absolutely. very, very contrasting things, but sure. they both draw me in, you know, so. I get um, it. Yeah, yeah, I get it. Mm-hmm. You're right. Mm-hmm. It's, it is two Japans. You're absolutely right about that. So, yeah. yeah. And that's why, and I love both. Uh, obviously, I love one more than the other, but I still love, I still, you know, like, I mean, Tokyo is one thing. Um, I've been to all their the, own separate. Yeah, yeah I, I've been to all the, you know, the, the big places in Tokyo. And don't get me wrong, I, I enjoy visiting there. And, uh, you know, unless I had like a job centered there, I, I wouldn't choose to live in Tokyo. Um, yeah, but absolutely. you know, I, I enjoy Yokohama. I enjoy Osaka. I enjoy Kobe. Right. Like I enjoy all these other cities, but yeah, something about Tokyo is just like, it's sure. I wouldn't say it's pretentious. I mean, there's a lot of people that live there, but sure. Um, yeah the fashion world and stuff like that. Yeah, and, yeah, and, and like I said, and, I, I'm in Yokohama, which is the second biggest city in Japan, right? But right. Yeah. I'm, my, my goal is not to go into Yokohama. My goal for me is to get out of Yokohama and go to the other places. So that's mm-hmm. just how I feel. That's what I feel I'm doing with the YouTube channel is like people know about this other stuff, manga and sushi and Tokyo and Yokohama and stuff like that. Like I, I want to, I said this, I'm sorry, I keep saying this, but I keep saying this on my videos is like yeah. people don't know that Japan is 70 percent forest. You know, that's the yeah. kind of thing I'm trying to teach them. Like Japan is mountainous. Look at the uh, map of Japan. It's yeah. green and brown in the middle all the way through. So people just don't know about that stuff. And yeah, of course, Japanese knows. But what I want some foreigners to come to Japan knows. And right. Yeah. Right. I don't want to be a travel channel or anything like that. I mean, it's not my kind of thing. I, mm-hmm. I, I first of all, I don't want to be a personality. I'm not I don't like I, I hate pointing the camera at myself i absolutely hate it but sometimes you got to do it if it was up to me i would make only b-roll videos but no one's going to watch that right so uh i I know i'm never going to be currently hannah or uh chris abroad or anything like that it's not even my goal i never even want to monetize my channel right i want to you have different goals for what you want to do right different goals Mm -hmm. right exactly so yeah no man uh, i'm exactly with you like i've when I first started doing youtube you know I, i was trying to do even then you know i was doing kind of typical J vlogger type things but even then i kind of wanted to do something a bit different and sure. i i hated pointing the camera at myself but i knew i had to build that skill up in a way so it is it something is you get practice. used to yeah sure and sure. Uh, i never really get used to holding camera and i always when i'm holding the camera and mm-hmm. you probably came across this too and then somebody walks on the oh god damn it i'm so sorry and then no, someone walks right. on the trail coming the other way and you're mm-hmm. like Man, do i look like an asshole carrying this camera in my face like yeah, I'm like I, I don't want to. <laughs> yeah, so that's why if I ever do like these walk and talk videos or something, I'll try to find somewhere where there's not going to be a lot of people because I'm sure. I'm very self conscious about it, you know. Like uh, I'm still am, and uh, but when I'm doing out uh, hikes, you know, like um, I don't mind doing a little mini little bit of narration, but most of mine now just focus on the what my view of what the trail looks like, you know. 
Sure. Like, cause that's, that's what people, that's what people are looking to see when they click the video is not yeah. my face, but what I'm seeing as I'm exploring through this. Exactly. Place, you know? so, exactly. And yeah. I like like channels like, uh, what's his name? Cur- currently Hannah, but the, oh, what's the guy in the States, the Craig Adams, like, I don't mm-hmm. know if you're familiar with him. They're making like silent hiking videos now. That's okay. really getting, getting big. Not that we want to copy, we want to make our own. So, um, they're making the hiking video where you're just showing the, the nature, the sounds, especially I'm, I'm really into audio too. So I, you okay. know, I got the, you know, mic pro and stuff like that but uh good good, um, good earphones yeah that's a good one <laughs> yeah that's a good one i'll tell you all about anything you want to know but uh cool, yeah, yeah that man. i'm really into doing those kind of videos and and i also like doing the voiceover instead of doing mm-hmm. the camera in my face but so once i get out there i'm like no one's gonna want to watch this no one's want to watch b-roll and stuff like that so mm. okay here's the camera in my face like i did recently i did that christmas hike and uh yep. you know near mount fuji but uh I, I as much I just I really don't like doing that to be honest yeah I don't want I don't want to be a personality I want the trees the forest the mountains the lakes the oceans I want all that to be the personality to be the star yeah I get be you the star exactly yeah. and um yeah so like um just seeing different scenes from not just Japan but you know other places in the world it's just it that's what draws me to want to go to these places you know like sure. I have a, a friend uh, we went to the same college in Texas and she now lives in Alaska and wow, she's, awesome. she's a flight nurse <laughs> i think so oh wow all right on so but like summertime man some of her hikes she went on I'm like alaska is alaska that's a hidden amazing. gym you know yeah. <laughs> yeah absolutely i could live there yeah. more and more i'm feeling like i could live in the i never really thought about it before but more and more i'm feeling there vice put out a video recently of people mm-hmm. in japan i don't know if you caught it it was like foreigners in japan that are now moving away since covid started mm. and they're moving all out into the countryside and houses are cheaper and the, the government will subsidize you moving out into the country in some places so yeah. um, that's something i thought about looking into is maybe getting moving to hokkaido or something yeah man yeah. like um, yeah. yeah i mean hokkaido see i'm you know, growing up in, in Texas, we didn't really get too much cold weather. And, you know, ah, I've, I've, I've experienced like cold. My, well, <laughs> yeah. I used to like winter when I lived there uh, because it was rare to get cold and snow. But now that I've, sure. you know, lived in a place where we about seven years ago, we had a lot of snow here. It was like the mm. worst snow. Times are changing, right? Um, so but now I, I hope it doesn't snow because I don't like shoveling it. I don't like dr- changing my <laughs> tires. You know what I mean? So like, I feel you. <laughs> I, I, my favorite season in Japan. A lot of people look, think I'm crazy, but I love the s- summer here, man. Yeah, so, man, we're totally opposite. I yeah. freaking hate the summer. I mean, plus yeah. I'm a fat bastard, right? So the yeah. <laughs> summertime yeah. is no good for for me. But the, well, I love when when time myself. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, autumn I guess would be my favorite. Autumn oh. season in Japan is everyone is loves great. autumn. Yeah, yeah, that's right. But, I guess they second. all have good seasons. Sakura, uh, the the Sakura season in April is yeah. great. Like, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. And I, I don't say I totally dislike summer because that's my paddleboard time. I mean, yeah, my, exactly. my surfing time, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. But like, like for summer for me, um, you know, I'm used to hot weather, which is fine. But like Japan almost becomes downright tropical. I'm sure you've, you know, experiences. You know, like the yeah. not only the heat, the humidity, but the the it, everything comes to life. There's just ambient sounds of bugs everywhere right. and it's cicadas, just this yeah. buzzing yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. and right, to me right. that with like you know um with the cold cold beer on an on, a, on an afternoon it just i, I feel know, you now, sound, that, now cool. that you're saying yeah. that i'm like yeah. i kind of yearn for it i'm like yeah, yeah. you're right a cold yeah. beer like out there yeah, yeah. but yeah. it's just hard for me to camp in the summertime because i can't sleep it's in the tent it's, oh, so it's so hot it's so hot, hot. Mm-hmm. But, but, but 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 if i go to chiba or something and mm-hmm. camp on the beach which we can do yeah something like that i can dig yeah so yeah, um, I'm curious if you've ever, um, like, I went to Burning Man here about here. Almost, yeah, five, Burning yeah, Man is it, here. It's called Burning Japan. Yeah. And, what? Uh huh. I didn't and, even know that. <laughs> yeah, like actually, I have a lot of footage that I took from it. That I'm, I'm gonna check gonna, it out if it's uploaded. <laughs> not yet. So like, okay, okay, okay. Basically, I, I shot all this footage. And I interviewed a lot of people there. Like when I say interview, wow. like I just I just chatted with random people I encountered because there were so many different people from. And you like, were filming it while you're doing that. I was yeah. It was like a four day thing. So um, right on, man. Yeah, yeah. But basically, I had I had most of it edited and thrown together mm. for my old channel. But then when I got sure. rid of that, I deleted all the footage. But I still had it on my camera. Oh, okay. So okay. I so I salvaged that, and I and now I'm going through the process of I'm I'm changing direction of how I want to present it, but it's going to sure. be up sometime. But it, it's about you know four and a half or far, sorry about five and a half years. 
too late, but uh, it better Doesn't late matter. than never, right? Uh, I mm-hmm. would love to see that. <laughs> yeah, man. So basically, yeah, that was that was a trip, man, because uh, that was only the third year it had been in Japan. Wow. And every I year they, know it was here. Yeah, every year they kept hopping around because it, it was hard for them to get permits for something like this. Uh, okay. You know, cause, uh, so basically, when it came up to, it was in Tochigi. That's where I went. That's why I went. Mm. And um, it was a four day thing. It was up in uh, Iwafune, which is in this little area that was used for like outdoor concerts and stuff, right? Okay. And um, I, w- I would say max number of people that were there over the four days was about 300 or so. Okay. Not that yeah, many. So it was very, very small. Uh, and when I, I got there on the first day, and it was, in, you know, mostly empty, it was like three or four tents up. And then my friend and I, we set up our tent. And then by the end of the second day, it, there was like, literally it became a tent city like there was like uh, neighborhood and streets and neighborhoods and like there was and everything was free it was like a very barter chill. you know it was like people there was like an odin bar and a, and a cheese and wine bar and but it's like everything is share and share like there's no money no, Bro, no concept of money yeah i love um, that there was Community. music of yeah music yeah. of all types yeah. people just jam like there was so many pickup jam bands you know like some uh japanese hippie guy brought like this big didgeridoo that he had and they were playing that and there was right on man and it was um but then there was like a whole section of like dubstep or like 80s rock i mean there were different areas of just different music and people were just dancing and having a good time man and then um, yeah i dig that yep so and it and it's very much art focus like burning man is so sure this the theme was like the future so like there was even someone even made like a little go-kart that looked like a UFO and you'd see like little kids dr- driving it around at night, like look like little alien UFO fl- flying around. Yeah. So it was, it was cool. We got some festivals like that over here, like the green room festival, like the mm-hmm. slightly stupid, I don't know what kind of music you listen to, but like everything. Reggae. Pretty much. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me too. I'm all yeah. over the place. Mm-hmm. So then, and it, It's chill. It's chill. I like the Japanese hippie dudes. In fact, one dude next to me, like sparked up a joint. I'm like, Whoa, Whoa, you man. It's crazy. Yeah. Like yeah. you had that dude on, right. About which I watched yeah. this episode. Yeah. He's like, pass it to me. I'm like, mm, mm, uh, it's like nah, in oh, Japan. Man. No, yeah, okay. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm good, but I appreciate it. Let me smell yeah. it a little bit. You know, yeah. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll maybe catch a contact or something. All right. <laughs> I was here back when shrooms were legal and stuff like that. were sold on the corner store. So I, I, heard, I heard about that, man. I was, I came here like 2008. So it was after that, but I heard like they in Shibuya, you could just, buy like shrooms off the street or something which doesn't yeah, sound the, like the safest thing to do anyway but <laughs> you never know yeah. you know uh, but right, right. That, i mean that's nuts as, as strict as japan is with it comes to the laws it's like that that of all things was i know was, right you know. isn't it weird mm-hmm. <laughs> all right yeah. yeah so man it's 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 um it's funny though like japan's attitude towards that but their attitude towards tobacco and alcohol which i'm i'm for that too it's like yeah do what you want but uh right. i mean it's celebrated here you know so i mean there's there, yeah. there's shrines that are like uh and, and again i don't know nothing about nothing but uh mm-hmm. there's shrines that are like uh dedicated to hemp right isn't there i've heard oh, that uh, there's, there's type, a, that kind of thing mm, yeah it was it's a it was an integral part of shinto <laughs> right up, in, up so, until uh, you know and, yeah. it, it, and it was legal oh, well it was legal for like religious purposes i think here until the americans occupied it uh, in World obviously War they and shut then, it yeah. down yeah macarthur right, yeah. right. Yeah. there i mean I've, I've mentioned this before but in nasu up here in tochigi there's a museum a hemp museum oh really it's, i didn't it's know actually that. actually it's just called cannabis museum in japanese but uh, what yeah oh, wow. and little, basically uh, they tell you the, the history of that used with shinto and i would love to learn that Tochigi was like the highest producer of cannabis in all of the country. And, wow. and there's actually photos of uh, Emperor Hirohito ex- uh, ex- um, inspecting the hemp farms and stuff. Are like, you serious? Hell no. yeah. And, and I knew it grew. Mm, I'm sorry. No, uh, but like it's, it's really entrenched in, in the politics here too. Cause um, the wife of Shinzo Abe, has her own cannabis farm and she was like on the cover of some magazine where she's has what? the plants. Dude, <laughs> I didn't I'm, know that. T- I'm telling you, man, it's, I try it, not to look at it cause it hurts yeah. my heart. Like we can't partake or anything like that. So I'm like, yeah. uh, not that I would allegedly whatever, yeah. but, uh, yeah, I, I allegedly, I, um, right. Yeah. So, yeah uh, allegedly. So, yeah. But, <laughs> so I mean, yeah, the, the, mm, the fact mm. that it used to grow wild and they said it grew wild and all over Hokkaido and oh, it still does. It still does. It still and, does. Okay. Like, that's the, right. The police yeah. have to go through and like burn the fields down because, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, 
<laughs> yeah. But I mean, that's just it, it's part of, ja- of Japan's history. You know, you look at some of the old like uh, Edo, like um, uh, wood woodcut painting, you know, like those, you know, that, oh, that style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you see it, you see it all through there, you know, so and really i never even yeah. noticed mm-hmm. and so no seriously come come up to uh, nasa and check out that museum it's it's really tiny it's, it's on a my really list. tiny building yeah <laughs> um yeah so um it's it's just interesting to see how the attitude changed after the occupation and now america's starting to turn around and but japan is still like nope it's not yeah, it's like they're so. brainwashed like i talk to you know people in my wife or someone like that i'll be like mm-hmm. hey, think about weed they're like oh my god you know druggy like i'm like oh man but you'll yeah. drink all night like come on man whatever like uh, i found <laughs> japanese who've traveled outside of japan especially to like canada or america have a different attitude towards it they still they say well in japan no mm. which i understand i you know it, it's the law is the law here however sure. much you disagree with it you know but but you think um, a country with the many suicides as japan has you know the, was it thirty thousand or something mm. the year before i don't know if that number's wrong i don't know nothing about nothing to remember that people but uh yeah. well I, I, a high I, number you think oh sorry no oh, no I, I was just gonna say I, I heard that the uh the suicide more people died by suicide in 2020 than covid, than COVID or something <laughs> isn't yeah. that crazy mm. isn't that yeah. insane man mm. so you think they'd be get into those kind of things like not I'm advocating everyone's different, but the, I don't know. I think they could use it. It's better well, than alcohol. Alcohol gets you down and depressed in my right, experience. Right. Yeah. It's like the, uh, now they're, they're saying that the, um, uh, they're using some forms of psychedelics to treat depression and PTSD mm-hmm. in, in soldiers and stuff in the U S and sure. uh, all, a lot of cities are, are decriminalizing it. For right. They're even pieces, talking about you know, so. microdosing psilocybin mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Yeah. So that's really interesting stuff. Yeah. So I th- I think if the sci- if the hard science comes out, like you know, to Japan's credit, if they see something that's hard science based, they usually adopt it. Mm-hmm. And from what I've seen, you know, and um, yeah, there's a stigma behind it, but you know give give it a give it a decade or two and maybe they'll sure. they'll start to, they'll start i um, hope so you know i you got to think that shinto and that stuff was created mm-hmm. out of those people i mean i don't mean to be disrespectful to people who are really into that stuff but mm-hmm. those guys must have been high man come on the monks i, I think every like every religion was founded on some sort of <laughs> right yeah i, I mean <laughs> well like i i'm sure you've heard this these theories though but like like uh judaism christianity you know like um Moses was, you know, yep. high on DMT when he, right? you know, the burning bush, <laughs> yeah, part of the you know. sea, yeah, yeah. stuff like that. Or, Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> or like, um, um, the, the secret psychedelic history of like Christmas, you know, like, uh, if you heard all that about the Santa Claus, yeah. the red and white crazy and, stuff, the, and, man. The tree and the reindeer eating, <laughs> right. You know? The berries are, they thought, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So like, yeah. I mean, or like even ancient Greek religions, you know, like the Oracle of Delphi was like, they would apparently it was built on this mountain that secreted some sort of noxious gases that would have make people have vision so anyone who went there would actually see visions right because of their they're they getting high. <laughs> high off these gases yeah. coming out, out of the rocks but they would attribute that's why the the temple was built there because it was seen as a religious experience so so yeah. interesting mm-hmm. yeah yeah, so like all these ancient chinese religions too you know i mean there it, it all has some something to do deal with it so yeah mm. so um we're not advocating anything on this program no we're not we're not at all (laughs) but (laughs) but it's it it, i mean i'm just a lover of history and cultures in general so it's um so that that's just stuff sort of fascinates me is um how little people know about their own history too that's right so that's right mm -hmm. so um so you've been other than the three-year stint in back in america was that for that was for work i take it or um that was for work. Well, they they there's always been a rule for the um, civilians that are here working as a GSs, government uh, civil service, that uh, after five years they have to go back to the states for two years. They okay. weren't enforcing it for years. They weren't enforcing it. People were just staying here forever. But the, at one point they started enforcing it, so I did have to go back for two years, and then I came back again. So my clock is actually ticking now. I do have to go back to the states again in uh, two and a half years, unfortunately. Oh, really? But, uh, okay. Hmm. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. I mean, I, you can always get a contract job or something like that. But the, if I want to stay GS, I do have to go back to the states for two years. Yeah. 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 Well, it's interesting though. I mean, like, <clears throat> so I guess you're on like um, how do 
how's the visa situation where I'm not really familiar with that. I mean, that's just a get special, on the, it's a special one, right? Yeah. You're on status of force in the agreement, which mm -hmm. to say is you won't, uh, you won't, uh, you got to follow not UCMJ guidelines, which is military, but, the uh, they're pretty strict. You can't just do what you want. And, uh, mm. like, like during the COVID, I got to be on at eight o'clock. I, I can't uh, do drugs or anything like that. Not, they don't test me, but uh, I was going to say, I, you can't I really do never, that anyway. I would never, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I would yeah. never but uh, I'm just saying like, you can't, uh, you got, you got to go by their guidelines and, I, like they always tell us, we're ambassadors, and I, I take yep. that to heart. So I, I don't yep. do anything uh, outrageous. I don't do anything crazy. So yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, in, in Japan, I, I I joke about it now with you know my American friends. Like Japan is now more free than America is in terms of like you know. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're 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 under some stricter rules, but honestly, Japan can't lock down. You know, I mean. Other than some shops closing past eight eight p.m., there's right. not a lot of. Um, they said it has to do with their uh, their rules or their, their government. Uh, I don't know what they call it. Their, the their, constitution, uh, I think. The constitution, the, right, right, right. So which, that's interesting. Which, hey, I, there's a lot of. I don't agree with the Japanese constitution, but this one, I'm like, well, <laughs> sure. You know. But I mean, I, I always advocate people take caution. You know, especially, you know, like I don't really fit into the um, category of a person that's going to get too sick off of COVID, but. I could, I could have it and still spread it to people who could, you sure. know, so I, you know, I'm, I'm not going to be an asshole and, and just disregard it. You know, I'm going to, sure. I guess living in Japan, I've kind of adopted a more, you know, think, think about others than yourself sort of attitude, you know, absolutely. Um, yeah, I'll so. wear a mask and I, mm -hmm. you know, we went, we went hiking the other day or camping and I, we went to go buy some meat and stuff or to cook at the barbecue. And I, walked into the store and I realized I didn't have my mask. I'm like, whoa, I felt like totally naked. Like, oh my yeah. God. Like I <laughs> ran yeah, back to my yeah, car yeah. and got my mask. Like uh, if I was in the States, probably I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to get yelled at by Karen, but I, I probably, uh, you know, yeah. I, I want to be respectful to the Japanese. So I, I do. Yeah, I have that, to anyway. It's our law. So yeah. 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 So, I mean, it's just here, it's, it's a different dynamic, you know, like people do these things, not because they're told to do it, just because they're, they have this sense of community, you know, like it's right. more of a, it's more of a right. group. Yeah. I'm, uh, you know, Americans more individual minded and Japan's sure. more group group minded. So they don't necessarily need to be told or forced to lock down because people kind of will generally heed, heed the, the advice, you know, of, it's totally different of, in the yeah. States, right? <laughs> oh yeah. The States is like, a, yeah. And now well, it's even split more because it's like a political thing. So right. Like, it's a political thing. And, yeah, and yeah. I'm yeah. just looking at people like, <laughs> It, it doesn't make sense to me, you know, and, you know, I get, I get it that some people like, well, I shouldn't be told to wear a mask. Well, well okay, I get it. All but, right, right. Just, just wear your know, mask, man. Shut up. Mm, like, yeah. Maybe yeah. it doesn't work. I don't know. If Fauci said different things, not to get political, but yeah. I don't know. Like, I'll wear my mask if it makes them feel good. So, yeah. Well, I mean, we're working at a, you know, running a, you know, business here, you know, with, with customers, you kind of. Sure you don't want to lose that either. So, you know, you know it doesn't matter. No, it doesn't matter your personal feelings. You got to sure. do what looks good at face value as well. So, you know, we, we follow all the guidelines and stuff as well. Absolutely. So, you know, we're pretty, I, we're pretty I, strict with that. So, yeah. I was thinking about, I, I wrote a little story on a blog, which is not great. I'm not saying it is, but the, about the way Japanese were wearing masks when we got here, right? Like mm -hmm. you came to Japan, you saw people wearing masks and I've never seen anyone wear a mask until I came to Japan. And uh, it figures out that they get very much from, uh, get the, uh, Get, get the um, Kafun show, right? Tr mm -hmm. The sugi tree get, gives them uh, the cedar tree gives them uh, allergies, right? Yeah, big time. That's why they especially started wearing masks. So. <laughs> especially so up here it, in Tochigi, we, that <laughs> right, whole right. road up to Nico is nothing but cedar trees. So, so the, and the sugi tree is a beautiful tree, and it's they say great. gods are mm -hmm. in the sugi tree, right? Sometimes you see the white paper with the lightning. I don't know mm -hmm. exactly what it's called, but the, you know, I was thinking that maybe the sugi tree helped save of uh, some a lot of big outbreak in japan because they were already wearing masks you know even yeah. from back then so i don't know I, it's, it's nature tied in with the it's funny maybe though. that's me just rambling but uh, yeah no i know it, it's funny though like the first time my uh, my mom came to visit me here in japan i think 2009 or so it was right when like swine flu was really big over okay. here okay yeah and yeah. she she that. had to wait on the plane like an hour while they were checking everyone's temperature and she said everyone uh, was wearing a mask and that was mm -hmm. alien to her then because uh -huh. you know no one in america wore masks for anything never really. and, 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 and never the, seen and one the wear, yeah. japanese or chinese visitors who would people would be like kind of staying away like what's wrong with them <laughs> that that right but yeah. now they fucking understand you know now but, but <laughs> oh, japan's just like yeah. yeah japan is like man we've been doing this for 
<laughs> decades, you know, so. Right, right. You know, it's I mean, kind of funny know. that, now, mm. I'm sorry, now, it's kind of funny now that COVID hits, people are like, uh, people used to be like, yeah, you live in the country, you're not a, you're a country boy. Especially mm-hmm. in Japan, they always call people country people. Like, yeah, you know, country people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, you're not, in, and also with the, the, I follow like some preppers on YouTube and, mm-hmm. you know, people will always make comments like, you're a dork, you're like, you prepper. And it's true, a lot of preppers on YouTube are like some fat 300 pound dude with a honey mustard stain on his wife and you're <laughs> telling us how to survive. You're like, just, just, this guy doesn't know, but the, the, oh, they're also some good guys, you know, that'll teach mm. you stuff like, and uh, that, that's kind of stuff that I got into. But now, anyway, now I follow them and I'm like, people are listening to you now, aren't they? Like, <laughs> yeah. you know, not that I want anyone to go crazy on prepping, but uh, living in Japan, you know, with earthquakes and tsunamis, mm. and Mount Fuji oh, it's, it's good to have that. Yeah, man. Mm. Yeah, you know, I've got water and food and stuff like that. So, you know, I just think everyone, that's another thing I like to tell people, like my coworkers, like, do you have extra batteries? Do you have, I, I don't want to be, sound like a weirdo, like a survivalist, because I'm not a survivalist, you know? Yeah. The world you're, is you're not like one, one of these militia, you know, it's not right. like this Unabomber type people you know right. <laughs> living out in the mountains you know <laughs> hey unibomber i won't get into that but yeah okay yeah. oh no 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 I, okay <laughs> manifesto had some uh i was gonna you know. say let let's get into that because um yeah. i've the more I, I remember at the time when when he was caught and as a kid i'm like oh that guy's crazy you know but right i didn't know also yeah right and then like i started looking into it and i'm not defending what he did with the bombs like absolutely not absolutely yeah. absolutely not um that's taking it too far, but you read what like he actually kind of believed in and stuff, and I and I got to thinking. There's there's that fine line between going off the deep end, which he did, and like man, he's making a lot of sense in a lot of ways, you know. And, I think about the the Unabomber. Uh, quite often because he's always saying technology <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and, I, yeah. and I'm going to come off as a weirdo and I don't no, mean it no, in man. any part that hurts I, anyone like that. Yeah, right. The technology part of it, like mm. you, we need to go back to the olden days or back mm. when technology is ruining. I feel that now about like, I'm out there enjoying the outdoors, but I also have my camera with me and I also go to Instagram and put a story like, Hey, I'm on top of the mountain, stuff like that. Like mm. I, and then afterwards I feel, um, I regret it. Like, dude, I shouldn't have posted that. I shouldn't have this camera. I shouldn't, I, I don't know. Like every year, every year around new year's, I delete all my Instagram pictures. Like I start over, like I did mm. that now. I only have like 12 pictures on there. Cause I find myself feeling guilty about it. Like, should I, should I just be soaking it in? Should I just like, yeah. just enjoying nature all the way i don't know i don't know I, I okay i see what you're saying man um i would i i completely understand what you're saying in terms of that like just you know just enjoying it and not having to promote it but right for me i what i and i always took this attitude when i started taking photos even before like when i started instagram i just would take stuff, you know, pictures of funny stuff that I would find, right? And then once I got on my hikes, I started taking uh, photographs, and then more and more people would say, "Oh man, that that looks really good." I'm like, I just pointed the, cam- I just pointed my smartphone camera somewhere right. and just snapped the photo, you know? Like I just said, I always liked, I just wanted someone to see what I was seeing, sure, and, that, and, that, and that's like a window to what I was seeing. Because I appreciated that. That's beautiful, man. And Window, and, yeah. and and that that's my attitude. That's why I put my stuff up there. Is uh, you know, obviously, I do a little bit of retouching in Photoshop and stuff. But sure, a lot of actually, to be honest, a lot of the photos I put up, I don't really retouch too much. Um, obviously, you know, some of the more like artsy looking ones, like the cyberpunk sure. stuff. Like, uh, yes, I, I I, but that's from a real photo that I took, though. You know, absolutely. But but for me, it's like this is. I just want to share that experience that I had with someone with whoever else will appreciate it. So I don't really care how many likes I get. I just want to share that vision that I had. And if someone else appreciates it, that's great. I've shared that experience, you know, that's, that's a great way to look at it. And I I feel Mm -hmm. that way too. Like, I just want to reach that one person, you know, that one person that says, Hey, I want to go to that spot where you stood. And I want to take that Mm -hmm. picture. Cause I've done that. I've watched YouTube videos or saw Instagram pictures that are like, Whoa, that place looks awesome. I am going there and I'm taking that photo, you know, and and, and you might take it differently because you don't want to be exactly the same as them, but I I never feel bad about using Lightroom or Photoshop. Peter McCannon uses Lightroom and Photoshop. So that's one of the world renowned photographers. So you right. know, it, well, like, it's great. Yeah. yeah the re- recently, I went to Oashi Valley in the in November, and I took you know a couple of, I took one photo that, man, I, I can't believe how how well that turned out. 
and so many pe- so many people fucking <laughs> yeah. loved it and right, i'm like on. man and, but what inspired me to go there was uh, there's this a photographer i follow on um on uh instagram who takes photos around tochigi and stuff and he took i was out of town that time but he took a photo of that very same spot and it was just the lush you know autumn leaves and everything i'm like holy fuck i want to go there you know <laughs> right, it's like you right. said i want to go there and i went there the next weekend unfortunately most of the leaves had fallen but i still was able to capture something same place but a different ang- my angle your my, angle my sure unique eyes. angle and sure yeah. and that still was one of my more popular posts and you know I'm, I'm not doing it to brag but really it is it's like you look at it and it almost looks like a painting and and that's every every time someone yeah. someone said oh you took a photo that looks like a painting i'm like i just i just take it but i i kind of attributed that to you know when i was i used to do a lot of art in um in as a kid and in high school and um even though it was a high school art class leo my, my art teacher always taught told me about framing sure and it's since big. then yeah. since then that's no matter if i have a camera or not i always look at something like how would i frame you know that's just a natural right. thing that i do sometimes the thing yeah. doesn't have to be in the center it's blocked to the side or you know exactly yeah, absolutely yeah and so I, that's I always, just a photographer's eye right there you know yeah. yeah and so that's what more and more people started saying man you you're really good at this and i'm like i don't even okay thank you you know and you it, are, it's you are really good at it <laughs> when i get compliments from people it's it's yeah. kind of like wow you know that's so that's what started getting me into like interested in cameras but i really don't know much about like you know, I'm learning about like aperture and, you know, sure. all, the, all these yeah. things. And it's a bit confusing, but I want to get a, a really nice camera. Well, and, I feel like, you know, I, I recently, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I recently got, I, mm-hmm. again, I'm learning too. I mean, I started off with my iPhone, you know what I mean? Yep. So yep. then you go up to the, you know, I had the, the Canon KISS X9, which is an entry level DSR, but I bought mm-hmm. like 10 lenses for it. You yep. got to learn, you know, I wasted a lot of money. I was going to say the lenses money. cost more than the camera <laughs> yeah. itself. Right, you know? right, so. right. But now that I got the, went to a full frame mirrorless, I really feel like, wow, this, the, 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 the step. It, and you know what? I got a full frame mirrorless, um, the RP with the 21 to 105 for $999 on, on, a on B and H photo. But oh, I have a US, yeah. I have a US address box. Okay. So it's easy for me to get stuff shipped from the States. So, but uh, I was so stoked on getting that deal on black Friday. Not that I was out shopping on black Friday. I just happened to be looking for a camera yeah. then. So, yeah. yeah. Well, you know, luckily you can get, um, you know, a lot of online shopping now. So that's right. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking to, um, you know, I was asking a few photographer friends, like, what's what's a really good camera I can get for, like, both city and nature photography? And there, you know, a lot of, like, more than one person was, like, Sony a7 III. And, like, Man, okay. you're talking about top of the line, though, you know? Yeah. You and get I the saw, money for that. <laughs> and I saw that, and I saw how much it cost. I go, whoa. So, yeah. So I was like, is there something else I can get that, you know, baby steps here, you know? So Sure. Um, yeah. So, I mean, I, I would <laughs> recommend my camera, but, uh, you mm-hmm. know, everyone's different, but I don't know if you're into Canon or Nikon or, or Sony. To, to be honest, I, it, I don't, I'm not really like a, a, a brand. Like, okay. I, I'm, I'm, I think I've heard somewhere that like some brands are better at capturing certain things than right. others, you know, Canon's like color. Right, right. Right. Or if you're looking for nature focus, then get this. Right. Or if you're looking for city, that, but if you're looking for overall, then get this, you know? And so I've been doing a little bit of research, but right on. you know, I'm, man i gotta i gotta budget for it you know i'm you know so <laughs> absolutely because right, right, right. those are expensive toys you know so they are expensive you know. like you said the lenses are the ones that really you know hit you <laughs> yeah. yeah so um I'll, I'll figure something out um i think you know i want to go for something that's good for overall you know maybe an entry level uh, camera for that have you, have you had a dlsr before um i don't I don't think so. The, the, the camera that I use right now is uh, this, uh, it's a Sony NEX5, I believe. And it's- What is that, a point and shoot? Yeah, it's like an NE, okay. yeah, NEXT, NEX5T. It's okay, it's not bad, but it's uh, it's definitely, it was, you know, about two, 300 bucks, you know? So it's um, not the, and I, I just have the default lens. I didn't buy any extra lenses for it, so. Um, that's After what I've been you... using. Actually, you sure. know, a lot of the photos that I've been putting on Instagram are either from this or from my uh, my iPhone, to be honest with you. So um, it, it really you know, doesn't man, matter this... your recording equipment. 
you it know, doesn't in the end it doesn't yeah. matter but the, i was gonna say after this you, you give me your address and i'll send you a camera i got a dlsr for you to play with what really we'll talk about that later oh, don't okay. sweat it. we'll talk about right, it later man. yeah okay yeah. well Sorry. I, I appreciate it a lot man <laughs> just sitting there i'd rather have someone use it so yeah okay man okay yeah, yeah. wow thank you thank you so uh, no no problem at all yeah so uh you said that you're looking well you're not looking to but you might have to return to the states in the next few yeah. years so um before that, what do you hope to um, accomplish? Uh, I, I'm, you know, the Gunma Gunma hike is is one we got to do. So <laughs> the, Gun, the Gunma hike, we'll we'll, we'll schedule that. I want to mm-hmm. go back to Hokkaido and and do a, a two week trip and drive around. I want to mm-hmm. go to Beppu, as I mentioned, the Kyushu area. Um, I want to go back to Iriomota Island, which is southern Japan. I want to go to Yakushima, <laughs> oh. which is awesome. And I don't know, but there's a possibility that I'll be able to go with some of the U.S. military. And I, I don't know for sure, but uh, man, I'm hoping that I can go to Iwo Jima. So that's oh, something wow. I would yeah. really yeah. love to climb Mount Suribachi and uh, do that. So that, that's, that that's, would be actually amazing. <laughs> I was going to say that that probably yeah. has a, a, a bit different, you know, that'll hit you differently, you know. That being, will hit you differently. Being, mm-hmm. Sure. So those I, are the I mean, type of things. Yeah. Yeah. Have you, have you been to Hiroshima at all? I have not. Yeah. I have not been to Hiroshima. That's another thing I need to do. Yeah. So I, I, I want to take a photo. Of, yeah. Mm, I went in 2009 and um, I was still kind of new to Japan then. It had been like just a little over a year since I'd been here. And um, I went by myself. Uh, and actually, that was one of the cooler trips that I took by myself because I did Hiroshima and I went down to like Yamaguchi prefecture into Iwa- iwakuni i've been and, to iwakuni yeah. yeah that was cool and then uh you know utsukushima or I- itsukushima mm. and and miyajima and, and everything and so that was really nice but hiroshima is really moving man because you know um i can under i could fully understand if as an american especially but the people harboring some sort of because yeah. because that's a right. in the history that's still a recent event there's still people alive who experience that you know isn't that but, crazy yeah but <laughs> the people of hiroshima were the uh, friendliest people i think i've mm, met in japan really yeah. wow they're very welcoming and they're and they're they're they want to tell you about this and you know there's a lot of old men hanging around in the park when i went and maybe some of them were kids when it happened you know and sure but they, they were they were no judgment behind them and it, it moved me a little bit because i'm like you know like obviously it's not i don't have a fault in it you know I, I was born in america it doesn't mean i have to answer for the the sins of absolutely my country you know in the right. past but neither do you know and it, neither does anyone else who's alive now whose country did you know horrible acts years ago you're, you know you're you right know. about that man because like I, I went to yasukuni shrine i don't know if you're mm-hmm. familiar you probably mm-hmm. are like and there was like the koreans out there and like people saying oh, you shouldn't be there and the right wing you know the buses you talked about that in one of your uh, mm-hmm. podcasts and you, you're mm-hmm. familiar but the, i just want to learn about the history you know i'm not there and they're like you know say you guys say sorry for the comfort women and stuff like that and like you said we're they weren't the ones and i kind of feel like that way the states too they're like oh your ancestors were <laughs> Yeah, you know, yeah. I'm like, I don't want to get into it, but you know what I mean? Like, come on, mm-hmm. man, let's, let's move on together. Like let's move yeah. on together. That's all. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I never hold anyone accountable for past sins of their ancestors. You know, that, that's right. not your right. fault. Um, all you can do is move on and try to be better. Than and you learn were. from history, right? Yeah, you don't yeah, erase exactly. history. You learn from, you erase it. It's going to happen again. So you learn from it. That's, it, all. that's exactly. And in studying history, that's, that's what I've learned is, you know, the, um, usually history never repeats. It's just, it's a, um, what do you call it? It's a, <laughs> um, not a rerun. What, what is it? A, a remake of, of something sure. that's at, you know, like, uh, right, right, right. you know, it's, it's always slightly different, but with, mm-hmm. with, with twinges of, of the past experience, sure. but, but you're right. Like people, you know, will judge Japan or judge America or judge any country for what's done in the past. It's like, you know, People don't hold modern Germany accountable for what happened. Yeah, exactly. You know, Germans Holocaust, are like, great people. <laughs> yeah, right. You know, yeah. <laughs> so it's yeah. it's like, why should you hold? Anyway, my, my point was going to Hiroshima, I felt a little twinge of guilt there, but mm. the people were just like, no, you know, like this is an event that happened. It's horrible. Sure. And, but we should learn from this not to repeat these 
mistakes. Hundred percent. You know, and I'm I like, need to go down there. Right? Yeah, you're making me motivated to get yeah, down there. <laughs> it's uh, and especially like there's a little, there's a little statue, that's still there where the uh, the shadow was burned into the wall. Oh, I heard that. Isn't um, that crazy? Yeah. Damn, man. And I went nuts. there. I saw, I'm like standing right in front of it, you know? So it's, uh, wow. It's wow, just wow, in front wow. of some little shop, you know, it's, it's All nothing, right. no, nothing special, but there is signs that point you the direction how to get there. But yeah. Man, that's tough, tough, tough to swallow. Like I felt like that. And I lived by, and I was in Maryland by Washington DC and I went to like mm. the Holocaust museum. And yeah. even after all these years, you feel it. Like you're like, they have that, the display of all the shoes, you know, at Auschwitz and you're like, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Like it's just touching, but you were there in Hiroshima, like right there. Like yeah, I was at the gosh. bomb dome. Like you can't obviously <laughs> go go in past the fence, but I was able to maneuver my arm through the camera, you know, and get get a kind yeah, of yeah. A, a pretty decent some pretty decent shots of of the of the dome. So so interesting. Yeah, yeah. I highly I recommend going there. It's um right on. I wouldn't say a pilgrimage, but you know, as an American, it's no, you're right. An interesting place to go. So absolutely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I haven't been to Nagasaki yet, but that's on the, on the list as well to go. Sure. So, sure. Yeah. So yeah, but for you, you, you got a, you got a lot of places you want to hit in the next couple of years. Hopefully yeah. things will start opening up before then. I hope. Well, I want to get my camping car again, a new one. When I come back next time, I'll buy it right away and we'll, I'll have those time. And who knows, I'll, maybe I'll end up staying here then. And that'll be my life. Just driving around, going to meet yeah. you know, and <laughs> Well, yeah. I, I mean, like not to get too personal, but like, could, could you get like a, um, Obviously, you'd have to maybe change your job, but could you get like a, a, a spouse visa through your wife? Or? I could. Mm-hmm. I could. Yeah, yeah mm-hmm. absolutely. But mm-hmm. I've just been working for the U.S. government for over 25 years now. It's, you know, it's you want that retirement and all I was, that. I was going to say, you probably got a good uh, good pension <laughs> going for that. So it's, Right, yeah, right. Yeah. So it's tough. Mm-hmm. But also, I don't want to leave Japan at all. Of course, I don't want to. But yeah. I got the, the you, you, you have a Japanese driver's license then. That's yes, the, I do. Yeah. Japanese mm-hmm. test. So, so you, it was in Japanese. You read, you had to read so Japanese. So mine was different. So as an American... Uh, they don't have laws here where you can just translate it. Okay. Like like Canadians can do that. Even, you know, right, like international license type. Yeah. Thing? Well, uh. no, it's like you go to I oh. think it's called JAF here or something. I forgot. Okay. It's like the uh, auto thing. But basically, you can get a certificate from them, and you just go down to your local Mankyo license center, and they mm-hmm. just convert your American license or Canadian license to a Japanese one. Okay. And as an American and as a Texan, because Tochigi didn't have any records of Texas driving laws. So, (laughs) and it's a, it's a racket pretty much. Uh, I had to get mine translated, but I had to take a a, a test, a written and driving test. But I'll just tell you this. I didn't take the Japanese version. I took the transfer, the American license to Japanese version. Okay. Okay. And it's easy. It's just, they will intentionally fail you numerous times just to get a little bit more money out of you. And oh, it's, no. it's, it's a racket yeah. up here. Yeah. Uh, okay. So, but when I say easy, the written test is 10 questions, English and Japanese. And <laughs> it's, questions? yeah. And it's questions <laughs> like if you're in Japan, if you're stopped at a red light, can you turn left uh, yeah, after, yeah. after a full stop? And the answer is no, you know, like no, absolutely. To, in the States, to, you can. Yeah, yeah. And they're trying to trip you up. Right. So or turn right, right on red. Right. Right. Yeah. And but yeah. they never tell you which questions you get right or wrong on that. They just tell you if you pass. Oh, they don't. Fail. No. Wow. wow. But I every time I took it, I always passed it, you know. OK. But the driving test is easy. It's just. Uh, they're really particular. Like I, I mm. failed once because at the, um, they call it the Midoshi Warui stop. It's like the blind corner mm. part of the test. And you're supposed to do a full stop, look both ways, pull up a little bit and look both ways again and then turn. What? Well, I never yeah, heard that. <laughs> well that's part <laughs> of their rules, right? And then, okay. and they, they gave me zero points for that once because I looked instead of left and then right, and then turn, I looked left, right, left. And they said, Oh, you you were too nervous. Oh my God. Yeah. They're that, they're that particular about it. So I took it a few times. I just said, you know what, I'm just going to keep doing it till I get it. And I've eventually got it. So it was just, Mm. and and it was cheap too. Each time it was like two, 2000 yen or so, but man, I'd rather pay him each money yen up front and be like, just pass me if I pass. Like, come on, man. Yeah. Cause it's an, it's a, it's an all day ordeal too. You're there yeah, really? all day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, um, you know, five, six hours or so. So it's, uh, it's, you know, it's just, it's mm. just like every 
red tape bureaucracy thing in this country. It just, you know, it's just a pain in the butt. So it, but sound, so it sounds like around, it's possible. Yeah. 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 If you stick around, you get it. So I got it. And since then, huh. you know, I've had to renew it twice and I got the gold license. So, I mean, it's fine. You know, I mean, hmm. and I've never, so far, knock on wood, I've never been, um, <laughs> yeah. you know, I've never had an accident or I've right, uh, had, right. a, you know, any traffic violation. So, I'm, you know, it's, it's. Yeah, I need a car in Japan. That's one of the things why mm -hmm. I never thought like I would want to quit. But now they say it's possible, but I, it's not like I can really work in Japan because of uh, this, <laughs> you know, right. like, well, I made hey, mistakes you, when I was in the Navy. So yeah. I was going to say, you'd be surprised, though, man. Yeah. Like, um, I see more and more, especially in the cities, though countryside yeah you're not going to get a lot of, right you know, i still but, get looks i'm like uh yeah yeah in the but, wrong country uh, for this but <laughs> i mean i don't know if you like onsens or anything but there's a cool i um, love onsens yeah there's a there's a cool <laughs> app and there's an instagram related to them too but there's an app that's called uh what's it called uh, I'll, I'll send it to you later but basically it, it lets you find all the tattoo friendly onsens in japan what there's yeah. an app for that mm -hmm. i there's, there's need an, that there's app. An app for everything now so. <laughs> i need so, that app yes it's like called like tattoo friendly japan or something like that so yeah. right on yeah, they're, they're out there man they're they're, they're okay. chill there's some chill places we usually so. go to the private onsen which costs a lot of extra money mm -hmm. five thousand yen or something for one hour so me and my wife would go on the private onsen but yeah, yeah i i, I want to go i used to play golf a lot what mm -hmm. there was a time when golf was my hobby so uh and then you take a shower afterwards and go to the onsen and they always look at me like uh, i'm like oh i'm mm. sorry <laughs> but i mean you're, you're also you get less attention I, mean, I wouldn't say attention you get less flack for it because you're foreign so that's that's a that's a pass that's true. yeah i mean they'll still mm. some places still won't let you in if they see it but mm. if let's say you go in and then they catch you later very rarely are they gonna you know make a big deal about it and right, kick right. you out they may tell you af afterwards like don't come here again but sure, sure you know they're not but um I I've, try to be extra nice when I get in the front of people like that. I'm like, oh, yeah. konnichiwa. Like, yeah. oh, genki desu ka. Like, you know, yeah. and, you know, even on the hiking trail, like they see my tattoos and they, they might be stand off office at first. I'm like, oh, I just try to be extra nice and show them I'm not a threat, you know, right. just the regular dude. And, and you know, I, it, it's so funny because um, before I went to the current gym I go to, they, I went to like, a, so the local basketball team in Tochigi is Tochigi Brex. So they have their own arena okay. here in, in like a, uh, a public gym, which is open like, 9 9 a.m to 9 p.m right and i used to go to that because it was cheap it was like you just pay like 300 yen for a one-off thing right it, very old and crappy mm. equipment it's like we call it the rocky gym you know uh, <laughs> you know like the old like <laughs> sure, rock, sure. rocky right, right. rocky uh balboa gym you know right, and, right, right, right. but there was this guy a japanese guy i'd be in there and he would come in all the time tattoos all over his body on his face he had like mike tyson style like tattoo on his what? face i'm like this <laughs> guy and he's japanese so i'm like mm -hmm. but they let him in they 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 did wow yeah yeah okay. there was no i mean so he either had connections with them or they just mm. didn't care you know they were so, scared to say something yeah. maybe yeah. i mean well, he was a nice guy i had a chat with him and you know we, we spotted each other a few times at you know right on and he he was he was cool but cool sometimes they, you, you you don't know what gets a pass or what doesn't sometimes you know so <laughs> that's right right, yeah. right 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 so all right man uh so it was uh thanks for coming on it was cool talking to you um i want to i want to talk more about the uh the the van thing uh sure sometime soon uh but, absolutely uh, yeah yeah so i'm actually can... looking at yeah i'm actually looking at buying a one now so maybe if i get one we'll yeah we'll chat about that yeah, hell yeah hell yeah so uh, and more about um, photography and maybe even videography, mm -hmm. YouTube and stuff. Because um, sure, I, I, li I like, like I said, I'm, I'm a fan of your videos. So uh, um, I appreciate that. So speaking of that, where can people find you online? Uh, where's the the best places we can find your work and 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 what you do? Sure. So I'm basically on all social media, but the the main things that I post is the YouTube Rock Eastwood Outdoors and uh, Instagram Rock Eastwood, Rock Eastwood Outdoors. I'm on Twitter and all that, but I don't really use Twitter or I'm on Facebook and I'm, I do have a page and there's not, there's only a couple hundred people on there. So, okay. but uh, most of the thing I do is the Instagram because of the photography and then I like videos. So YouTube. Yep. Okay. Yeah. And so I'll, uh, I'll put the links to, especially the YouTube and the Instagram in there, but uh, any other social media uh i'll link those below as well nope try to keep it as small as possible <laughs> okay yeah all right not, not so anything, uh yeah. I'll, I'll point people in the most important direction then yeah right on bro i really appreciate it thanks for having me on and i love your work too and your photography is great i think you're doing awesome and well, with, especially with the podcast bro that is 
great. I love that you're doing this. I love that I found your channel. Not to keep going. I know we're going to end here, but the, um, I try to keep as many people that I follow as low as possible, like 100 mm. or less, because I want to get to know people. Sometimes you overlook, like I, I knew I were following you. I loved your pictures and stuff. But mm-hmm. after we talked and I started looking at your page and then I found out about your podcast, stuff like that, like I'm, I'm glad I really got to know you more. And I really appreciate what you're doing. And you're, do, you're doing awesome, man. You're doing awesome. I love well, it. I, I really appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, sure. let's let's plan that hike in Gunma sometime. Okay. We will do that in the camera. I'll get a hold of you. Okay, cool, man. Yeah. All right. Right on. See ya. Thank you.